Hey everyone, welcome to uh, session 11, I think it is, for Invasion. Uh, so uh, before we do a recap of last time, we got a couple things I want to plug real quick. Uh, today, yeah, it was today, uh, we dropped uh, another session, uh, podcast for uh, Dungeon Jedi Masters. Go check that out if you haven't. Uh, it's going over all the, the new maneuver rules and changes. Uh, and pour one out for Vars. We talked about the, the tactical specialist losing its signature maneuver. <laughs> Uh, but uh, there's a lot of cool new maneuvers with that in there. It's some cool stuff that goes along with it. So check that out. Check out the uh, the changes if you have it. I think they're on the website now. They weren't on the website and recorded, but they're supposed to be there soon. So uh, if they're not on there, they probably should be there next week or so. Uh, and then the other thing, uh, make sure to come hang out with us Wednesday the 27th uh, for our game of the month with the One Ring RPG. Uh, so we're doing an actual play of that. We'll be giving away a copy of uh, the Systems PDF. It's by Free League. Uh, if you're not familiar with the One Ring, it's a RPG designed for the Lord of the Rings universe. So uh, it's been pretty sick so far. So come Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time and hang out with us. Uh, but let's get into Invasion. Uh, so last session, uh, I was kind of wrapping up uh, the downtime a little bit. We got to see uh, what the Republic half of the crew uh, did during their uh, two weeks on Bespin, uh, where uh, starting with Dash, uh, he, he got, had a few too many uh, and was running down Bespin, uh, the gla gas giant uh, with fireworks uh, exploding off. But I think he, he was naked, wasn't he? I don't remember. <laughs> I think so. If I remember right. Yes, that might have been true. <laughs> but, yeah, might have been with a capital, definitely. <laughs> but uh, he was captured. Uh, luckily, uh, Captain Kerr of the Republic came through and bailed him out. Uh, but not before our uh, Republic News Network RNN got a good clip of him. Uh, and I mentioned that this is uh, who you believe about uh, what happened to Vela. Uh, so <laughs> the plague a few times. Uh, after that, he did some good, though. Uh, he helped Captain Kerr train a new batch mm -hmm. of recruits uh, in, a, in a unique style of training. Uh, but they came through it alive. Nobody lost any limbs. They disarmed the explosive. Uh, and they, they got a little bit of a new asset, a uh, new bomb crew, if they, uh, they ever get into that. So after that... Uh, Caesar, on the other hand, I'm blanking on what he did for his first week. Uh, I can't remember what he did for his first week, but I know for his second week he did help the Republic research uh, on both the war effort and kind of what's going on in the galaxy. Uh, and within there, he found out a little bit of facts of what's going on in the Dominion. Uh, the, the crew's old friend, uh, the liberated Sith they found on Vela, Galvin, or Lord Galvin, uh, had been leading a purge of Dominion's officers. Uh, Republic intelligence hasn't been able to figure out why they're doing it. Uh, they're theorizing that the Sith uh, alliance is finally starting to break down. Uh, but they also learned, too, that uh, Galvin led an attack on the planet... Uh, what was the planet? Uh, the planet that the Kli, Kli, Kli uh, the, the Kleesh are from. Uh, they led a, the Dominion led an attack on Kali uh, and bombed it into oblivion. They executed a base Delta Zero uh, and basically made the planet uninhabitable. Uh, so far, public intelligence hasn't been able to determine why, but uh, they're, they're thinking that the Dominion is just a little unstable. There's some power plays going on. Uh, but after this, the crew gathered up uh, and answered the uh, Vars' call to go to the wheel. Uh, the wheel could be in kind of an independent station, uh, not controlled by any of the galaxy's major factions. Uh, a place where you can go to get lost, uh, find some crazy gear, or uh, just spend a few credits gambling. Uh, so they made their way there and got to uh, all do a little bit of shopping uh, for, for those who were lucky and get some new gear. Uh, and afterwards, uh, they did meet up with uh, Varz's commander, Velku, uh, who let them in a little bit on the situation. Uh, basically, the crew, uh, the Mandalorians, had, uh, in their recent acquisition phase uh, of stealing new ships to add to their own armada, uh, they uh, captured a Crusader frigate on the way out from Kashyyyk. Uh, and that's not really noteworthy on its own, but within, they found a crew manned by both Wookiees and humans and other species. Uh, and uh, within their cargo hold, they found a kind of a 
group of Wookiees who had been enslaved with the same York coral implants uh, that the Yuzon Vong use. Uh, so uh, Commander Velku uh, wanted you guys to see if you could find any connection between the Vong uh, and the Crusaders. Uh, in doing so, he lets you examine uh, the prisoners, uh, where one, they, they've all been fitted with the coral, but they tried to remove the coral from one damaging his mind. Uh, but the crew was able to get a little bit of information from him, learning that uh, he had been a Wookiee guardian on Kashyyyk, uh, that he had patrolled the Shadowlands and was captured by the Crusaders, uh, and he'd been going to the Shadowlands due to uh, monsters, not really kind of a, kind of monsters being born and monsters attacking his people, and he'd gone to fight back against those monsters, but with his broken mind, you guys weren't able to get much from it. The one thing you were able to confirm is that he has not seen the Yuzon Vong before, because uh, he completely blinked uh, when you guys showed him the picture. Uh, after that, uh, Talos uh, led his surgery crew and got to uh, bring them all together and work on one of the other captured Wookiees who still had their York Coral implant in uh, and beat a pretty high check to not only save that Wookiee's life, but to free him with his mind intact and make a procedure, uh, kind of a, a set of guidelines that other less skilled surgeons could kind of go through uh, and use to remove the York coral without damaging the person's mind or psyche. Uh, that's actually where we wrapped up at. So you guys were able to examine the crew, uh, but there was also a ship that they were captured on that the Mandalorians brought and have secured in a bay too that they recommend you take a look at. Uh, but before we get into that, was there anything else you guys wanted to do within the, the, the surgical suite with Commander Velcro? We had, uh, I had gotten impression off that Wookiee through the force that he, like, I could fix his mind, but it would take like a week of solid just focus on it. Was that oh, what we That's right. <clears throat> okay. I forgot to mention that. So yeah, you can fix him, but it would take, excuse me. It would take a week of downtime. Okay. Something to consider if we come back here for a week of downtime. All right. I think I think yeah, I would I didn't have anything else to do. Oh, Watch actually one work. question I had. I don't know. I know you shared the the Mandalorians have it just because they watched you. Uh, but are you sharing that procedure with anybody else? Uh to how to remove the the York Coral implant. Uh this was specifically with the Republic, right? Oh, this was the Mandalorians. Or, I'm sorry, this was the Mandalorians. Mm -hmm. um, I would... Um, I was thinking too fast there. I would... Oh, this is conflicting. Because thinking out loud, sharing that procedure with Zerka can also, you know, help with the opposite of, uh, of that. Um, I think... I think for sure I would I would share it with the Republic. Uh, I think that Caesar would probably agree with that as well. Um, but for now, I'll probably I'll probably hold on to the procedure myself, just to kind of sanitize it maybe, um, and refine it down even more so that nobody that isn't uh as smart as unless they're as smart as me uh would really be able to uh build off of it so it it literally be a 10-step process of of removing this but not being able to really add to or or change to reverse engineer it in a negative way um so yeah i'll just i'll just kind of hold on to it for now as far as uh zirka is concerned they're they're really revealing their true colors almost every single time that we talk to them. They just <laughs> they just don't care, and they're taking all the uh, the positive um, progression that we're making towards figuring out this enemy, um, and just and just turning it around and and becoming the enemy themselves almost. Uh, it feels like so. Yeah, I'll keep it. I'll keep it to myself. But uh, whatever the Mandalorians end up doing with it, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna beg them not to share it with anybody. So I mean, that's that's really on them. I'll give you an insight for your role. The Mandalorians are one of the type to. They, they invest in science, but not in bioscience as much as other factions. Yeah. Uh, they, they would use it to uh, to remove it, but they're not really gonna go too much farther than that. Uh, and you're sharing uh, with Republic the, the the true version, or are you doing the kind of the sanitized version too? 
Um, I, I, I think I don't necessarily know uh, what I would sanitize. Um, we might we'd have to discuss a technical uh, look at of what the procedure actually was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I might I might sanitize it just just a little bit to um, keep it simple, so that it's like you know if you run into this procedure, this is what you do, and not necessarily the extra you know, side, side notes and cliff notes of this is what it means. And this is how, you know, what it does, like more detailed readout of, of it all. Just, this is how you remove it. And this is how, this is how you fix it. And that's it. hundred percent. Yeah. Well, we'll basically say you kind of removed uh, your notes and your studies so far where we learned about the implants itself and some of the long genetics, uh, just basically it's a strict procedure without any kind of the, the research notes behind it. Perfect. All right. Uh, yeah, so you guys uh, transmit that off to the Republic. Uh, it's a thick file, so you'll probably hear back from them a little later. Uh, but uh, are you guys heading to the hangar? Anything else you could do in here? Uh, wasn't there a ship that also we were going to investigate? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what uh, the, the hangar's for. Uh, the Mandalorians oh, okay. have uh, okay, the ship gotcha. in a yeah, secured yeah. hangar uh, on the wheel. Gotcha. All right. Yep. Sounds yeah. good. So we we dealt with uh, the Wookiees. We know that one guy needs a week or so to treat, and then we have the procedure. What I was there anything else we were here for? Oh no, nope. I was just making sure you didn't want to ask him to vocal okay. anything or uh, ask the uh, the Wookiee that you spoke to anything else. Uh, basically, uh, the Mandalorians and the Verpin scientists are going to begin basically kind of doing uh, uh, okay. the procedure now uh, and kind of working to make sure that. The they've got care. like the dozen or two dozen of whatever patients they've got to go through and yeah so they'll be working for a little while but uh, yeah. luckily okay. it's a the, the, you guys did well with that so they've got a down pat and can kind of just move through it we won't come back to an army of wookies <laughs> that are trying to attack us no. <laughs> taking over the wheel to... yeah. <laughs> fed them after midnight what the hell do you do? <laughs> yeah i think i'm I think Uli would be like, well, we're done here, right? You go check out this ship. It's like, don't tell anybody. I got a sick perversion for technology. My people don't really like it. They're not as crazy as these people, but <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we tend to shy away from it. But I'll lend my I'll lend my expertise where I can. Sounds like a plan. <clears throat> Perfect. Yeah, you guys... uh... Oh, go ahead. Talos, Talos will start removing the surgical gowns and the gloves and uh, cleaning up and then and head out as well. Perfect. You guys maneuver through the wheel. Uh, Commander Velku gives you the coordinates to where the uh, the hangar bay is located at. Uh, it's a little bit ways from the Mandalorian sector, but you do see it's kind of in a less trafficked area. Uh, you see less people uh, kind of the closer you get to it. Uh, once you do put in the codes that Velku gave you, uh, you do see kind of a large bay and within uh, just one freighter. Uh, and this freighter, uh, give me, give me uh, anybody who's proficient in either piloting or technology, give me a check. Start start really strong. Really good. Oh, nice. That's some big boy smarts, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody's got a PhD. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what well, he did his uh, undergrad work on. Ships. <laughs> I, studied sh- I studied ships as a joke. <laughs> I wrote a paper on this. <laughs> I can't have only 11 degrees I'm earning. I have to earn an even 12. This is one of his thesis statements. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Take a look at the ship. Uh, Talus uh, and uh, Dash as well sees a little bit of this. Uh, so the ship, uh, it's nothing special on its own. Uh, it, it's a kind of a standard stock freighter. It looks it looks like one of the things, uh, Talus, you're able to tell for sure, this has been retrofitted. It looks like it probably uh, was a wrecked hull, and somebody took it, patched it up, uh, and spent some kind of loving time to put it back into commission to be able to fly. Uh, and uh, actually, Dash, you'd notice that piece as well. Uh, tell us one of the pieces you would notice, though, uh, is it seems 
like even with it being kind of retrofitted and kind of born from a Hulk, it seems kind of stripped down with some of the technology. Uh, it doesn't, uh, you don't see many sensor dishes like outside of the bare minimum to kind of do, to fly a ship. Uh, you see uh, it's pretty light on uh, overall guns as well. Uh, it's just, um, it looks like it's been kind of just stripped down and can't tell if it's due to lack of resources. Is this being kind of a retrofitted ship or, or kind of what was going on? Uh, but it does seem to not just uh, to have all the, the bells and whistles, even some of the low class for have. Hmm. So uh, this is as we're kind of like walking through it, boarding it and looking around. Um, yeah, I would, I would definitely point that out to everybody. Just, huh. This isn't the normal installation for this type of ship right here, as far as I can recall. And um, it seems a lot of the normal the normal systems that would be in here are are missing. And and for a and this is a Mandalorian ship, right? Oh, well, it is now. It's <laughs> not. It was a Crusader ship before they captured it. Uh, and actually, I should have mentioned okay. that, too. So you saw uh, the whole, uh, it's been patched, uh, but you saw even kind of recent kind of cuts, uh, burns, and blast marks uh, where it looks like uh, the Mandalorians did their uh, their new signature raiding maneuver of uh, being outside of a ship, or kind of using their Beskar garb to float in space and haul through uh, towards a ship and cut their way in. Uh, but it looks like uh, the Mandalorians have patched that damage up. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll point that out along with the uh, the uh, light weaponry for uh, uh, the ship as well. Though it is a freighter, so having having a lot of weapon a lot of weapons on it, I think would also kind of be like cause for concern. But there's a lot of non ordinary with this ship. Yeah, but. Well, uh, should we should we start in the front or make our and make our way back or how do you want to do this? And as you guys go in, uh, so you do see there's about uh, three kind of core areas, uh, four core areas within the ship. Uh, so you've got kind of the, the cockpit and the pilot's control area. Uh, you've got the cargo hold, uh, living quarters, uh, and then just kind of some walkways throughout the ship as well, connecting everything together. Uh, and as you guys get inside, too, uh, you notice kind of the same lack of uh, unnecessary technology. Uh, but give me one more. Uh, give me an insight check. Anybody who's proficient in insight. Yeah. Ooh, apparently I'm proficient. Yes. Is only oh. not proficient in insight? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like the one I didn't take in that whole. Yeah. Yeah. That sh I should have, but no. Well, Vars, you uh, you notice this, especially after it's been pointed out with the technology piece. Uh, but you do see it like not only just technology is lacking, but kind of like comforts. Uh, you see that the chairs are kind of like hard metal without cushions on them. Uh, you see uh, that they don't really have much of kind of like the unnecessary atmospheric conditions so like no ac it's basically like they'll, they're, they're able enough to keep them warm but it's not anything that's going to make them comfortable uh, and you see even within the 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 hangar for this ship it's pretty cold and uh just unbearing or not unbearable but just uninviting uh you see that they've really kind of stripped anything that wasn't essential from the ship uh whether it be kind of uh just those creature comforts the technology uh that they're going for a very utilitarian vibe and again, based on the little that Vars may know about the Crusaders, does that sound right? Uh, give me a lore check. Lore. Hiya. Yeah. Hey. Oh, nice. Yeah, that, that does fit from what you've heard of them. Uh, they are a, uh, so the one thing that I, they probably wouldn't fit super well from what you've heard, uh, but you know they have to scrounge for anything they get, is you'd expect more weapons on the ship. Uh, mm -hmm. But they are a kind of a minimalistic warrior based society where basically you fight for everything you get. Uh, mm -hmm. So, really, if it's not functional, it's not necessary. Well, I'll uh, take the time to point this out to the rest of the rest of the crew, mentioning that, you know, none of these chairs have any padding. 
these that, beds. Ain't, uh, that explains my confusion. And a couple <laughs> things here. Yeah, they don't have, seem to have any sort of heating modules or nothing, not enough to be comfortable at least. A ship this size. It's, even I think this has got a bare bones. <laughs> Huh. Is it Weird. different than what they usually do? I mean, no, it's just weird seeing it Holistic. up close. Well, yeah. Well, we don't have enough to establish a pattern just yet. Maybe this one was an odd one out. Maybe they just were the one that drew the short, the short stick and didn't get the AC installed. <laughs> For all we know. <laughs> They could have just been, you know, if they do cobble it together, maybe they just didn't have what they needed to make it functional. Or well, they could have had one heavily armed ship or three lightly armed ones, you know, carry more cargo. Well, Who knows? What I do, what I want to know more about is where they had those crystals, like where they had the, the Wookiees. Oh, so like where the, would that be? Yeah, where they, where, where, where they, where they kept them? Yeah. Oh, they kept the lookies? Yes, that's in the, the cargo hold, so definitely kind of uh, down in the bowels of the ship. Well, uh, I guess we could start from the front then, the, the cockpit, and make our way back. Like uh, the good doc said. Do we want to split up or maybe pair up? Probably not yeah. a good idea to split up. Exactly. We don't know what sort of <laughs> tricks are on this thing, but evil what does this ship smell like oh. i know that's an odd question but you would think people i mean here's my thinking all these people can find together slaves and stuff like does it smell sanitary or does it smell like a zoo yeah it smells <laughs> great uh you've okay. got uh even with like because you guys right now haven't gone into the, the, the area where they held the slaves uh yeah. but even with just like there's a, a number of the crew that were holding the, uh, the Wookiees hostage. They were Wookiees themselves, too. Uh, without a lot of, like, the creature comforts or the atmospheric stuff, uh, it just... It, it smell, you smell a lot of fur. Uh, a lot of, <laughs> it, it, it does not smell the best. It just... Wet wet fur and probably feces. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely summer today on Kashyyyk. Just, With a well. mixture of still kind of like that burnt metal smell from when the Mandalorians entered it, just kind of making yeah. it unholy coffin. Just <laughs> burnt ozone and hair and just every wonderful smell you could possibly have. It smells just like yeah. Kashyyyk. <laughs> Glad I'm wearing this helmet. <laughs> Hey, new oh, man, man uh, you can still put that out. Oh, yeah. jeez. I wish I couldn't smell it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and how are my heat sensing <laughs> hair tentacles going? <laughs> Anything from them? Trying to receive into your skull. So, so, what do they do again? I think it's more like they, they're, uh, I think they're reactive to temperature. They're not exactly a, uh, I think it's more like the here I'll post. The, I think it takes. I think this is kind of what does it. <clears throat> I was just kind of seeing if there's any extra heat given off or any sort of. No extra heat. Uh, it seems colder than you'd expect. Uh, with that last lack of atmospheric controls, it's just it's it's real. Uh, it'd be a hard to do a whole voyage like this. Okay. Like yeah, no, it just smells really bad. Oh. Well, the sooner we get this done, the better, I guess. <laughs> All right, well, let's start with the cockpit. Uli will plug his nose. <laughs> <laughs> start helping to scan. Um, I guess, what would we be looking for? So within the cockpit, you guys see, uh, so this is a little freighter, so you see they've got kind of the three seats arrayed around there, one for the pilot, co-pilot, and one for the navigator. Uh, you see they've got kind of the, the, the central navigation computer is still operational, uh, as well as just some of the, the piloting controls look to still be functional uh, after making that, uh, after kind of the, the Mandalorian attack and being brought in. Hmm. Well, okay. uh, well, the nav computer would definitely be a, a good... Yeah. A good first start location, especially to see, um, based off the information that we've learned, that they were that they were present on Kashyyyk, to know exactly where they were going, 
within the uh, will Shadowlands. It, will it give exact coordinates like that? Or is it just specific to the planet? Not sure. So it would be more to the yep. planet. Uh, oh, okay. But yeah. you do as you really check hoping. it. <laughs> so it gives you kind of that planet coordinates. Uh, as you initially check it, you do see it looks like it's been wiped. Uh, but you know that if uh, with kind of a good slice of check, you may be able to report, kind of bring back some of that data because uh, it's hard to delete anything forever. So let's make a slicer get check. Uh, I'm not a slicer. <laughs> Gear was. <laughs> Is everybody a slicer? <laughs> I don't think uh, Caesar might be. No, I specialize in getting rid of data permanently. <laughs> <laughs> Explosions would be the one true way to get rid of it. <laughs> oh, let me check um, Caesar real quick. Uh, if nobody else is, would a okay? So I have a question. It was just brought up in um, a, a, another group, which is the only reason why I'm asking. Um, but apparently Tinkerer's Tools can take on the traits. It has a feature in, um, I don't know, what is, whatever it is, the expanded content or... Wretched Hives? Yeah, Wretched Hives. Yeah. Um, that allows it to take on the tr uh, the traits of other kits if you don't have them. Uh, I don't necessarily like that, but if that's a feature that I can use, would I be able to supplement Tinkerer's tools uh, for Slicer's kit in this case? Mm -hmm. I was going to say, disadvantage, yeah. Disadvantage, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, if that was a no-go, I was open for maybe a straight technology check that's also high so disadvantage here we go uh can i apply a temp boost to this sir oh yeah you're not in a, you're not in a rush fantastic nice oh. yeah so you bust through uh the kind of the system uh, and locate uh the lost data on this uh you will know that they've the sh ships frequently trans transported. Wow, hard to speak there. Uh, it goes from Kashyyyk to a planet named Serpendel pretty frequently. Uh, this has been its fourth. Uh, <laughs> I saw that movie. <laughs> this fourth uh, fourth trip there in the last month, or it would have been its fourth trip there before the Mandalorians got it. Fourth trip to Kashyyyk. Uh, to or, well, uh, between Kashyyyk and Serpendel. Okay. Uh, and look at uh, that. Mark where Serpendel is at too on the map. So uh, it is over here. There we go. I was going to move the Dominion thing. So it's right. If you look at the top of the map in the middle, Oof. way too. Uh, and where is Kashyyyk then? Uh, Kashyyyk is like right in this area over here. It's uh, right in by Hap. So. Uh, Okay. Move the Hapsky sword. It's where that uh, Crusader wing is, too. So it's right okay. there. Gotcha. Yeah, so when I managed to tinker this information out, um, I'll pass it on to everybody. It, it looks like they've made a few trips uh, all the way from Kashyyyk to, uh, that's quite the trip to. Uh, a planet called Serpentel. Um Never heard of it. Four times. Do you guys know anything about about that planet? I mean, I know Kashyyyk, home of the Wookies. I know nothing about um, this other planet. Would we other know anything about that? It looks like it's on like a couple Wood of trade route. routes. Oh yeah. Like, so uh, anybody proficient in lore, uh, give it a go. Let's see. Bro. Ooh. 10 and 12, baby. <laughs> uh, so, unfortunately, Dash and Vars, you guys have not come across Serpendale. Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's, be, it's on the real back end of the outer rim. Uh, it's connected to a few train routes, but it's not really, uh, it doesn't have too much of note. Uh, well, Talus, uh, 
one of those PhDs that must have been in one of those studies there. Um, you uh, learned galactic it. history. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, with kind of in, in reference to galactic history, it's not it doesn't have too much of a background. Uh, it's been conquered, uh, trying to trade it back between uh, kind of being in the Republic of the Outer Rim and then being in the Dominion. Uh, the Dominion controls it, but they, they've got like probably a cruiser stationed outside of it. It's not really one that they care too much about. Uh, it's just a decent spot on a trade route to get uh, get your uh, get, get some fuel and get ready to go. Uh, what are the notice, no, interesting things you noted about it, though, or maybe how it came up in your studies, is they do have kind of a weird, uh, or not weird, I would say, they do have a religious focus upon their moon, and it's uh, as a moon has kind of an interesting kind of orbital pattern that kind of does play a little bit of, uh, impact some of its life and culture, it's just uh, been one of their kind of major, major claims to fame, is just kind of how they're, they're on a, um, traditional moon uh, rotation. Huh. Outside of that, it's a backwater planet. I mean, it, you'd be surprised anybody would take the, this much time to cross, and especially if they're moving slaves, uh, going from Kashyyyk to Serpendale seems like a, a waste of time when you could hit uh, Kashyyyk, or not Kashyyyk, you could hit the hot cartels and sell your slaves for a better price there, or uh, even uh, try to sell them to Zerka as indentured servants. Well, yeah, uh, this is interesting. Well, based on where it is, can you see what route they took? So I, th I think that's worth noting. Oh, that's a good question. I need to have like an uncluttered <laughs> yeah, map right. for that. <laughs> Just make it up. Okay. They, took, they took highway. Uh, the worst know, part is that if I didn't have my map, cluttered, they have it labeled. <laughs> they have, uh, which one is Sir Fidel on? Uh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. If you haven't thought of it, I'm guessing it's not relevant. It's not relevant, actually. Yeah, <laughs> 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 now the Star Wars tracks me wants to look it up. Because <laughs> um, I'm like, I want to look it up. Yeah, maybe they're friendly. Maybe they cut through the Republic. Oh no! Well, you know what? Maybe oh, I'm this is important. Time. So uh, no. with that, they do have to cut through. Uh, a pretty like it's a fraught route they travel because uh, yeah. they do have to go through with some independent space near the wheel, uh, and then they cut through and they have to go through a solid chunk of Dominion space to make it through. Uh, the Dominion's not friendly with the Crusaders either, uh, so they it's it not only as it's out of the way, it's it's a risky route to travel just to sell. Yeah, that's that's what that part's the part that that I picked up on because I'm like, that's really freaking out there, and you're gonna have to piss somebody off to get to it. And then uh, Caesar would mention too, if he was here, uh, the Dominion's not fond <laughs> of slavers. So the Dominion, uh, for being a Sith-run nation, they they hate slavers with a pretty. Hot would I have known that given my background? Uh yeah, you'd probably know that too. Yeah, you, you're they hate slavers, but they love holding prisoners, making them work against their will. <laughs> it's totally not the same thing. Sure. Hey, hey, <laughs> titles are important. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was just curious about that because it's all about. I Perception, yeah. <laughs> marketing, <laughs> synergy. All right, um, yeah, I, I would pass on all the information I know to. Um, uh, let me think. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Never mind. Galactic world history. I have a PhD in this. Um, How do you? Forget? It's pretty much a. It's pretty much a drive-through town, um, or drive-through planet rather. Um, and they have a religious focus on their moon that has a pretty pretty odd. Uh, orbit, um, as far as I can recall, but I'd be considering the territory. Um, I'd be very interested to see what other technology, if it hasn't already been removed yet, um, what technology that they have to be able to get through that area, either uncontested or, or however they did it. Um, maybe they were trading with somebody. Um, but as far as the nav computer shows, they, um, as long as this is correct, Tegan, uh, it was point A to point B. It was Kashyyyk to, to there and back. So well, the only commodity they had was the jewel and crusted Wookiees. So, yeah, maybe, maybe that's, that's typical slaves. Maybe that's part of their minimalist design, too. If they're supposed to normally be heavily armored with weapons yeah. and armor maybe not having that doesn't get the anti-slavery people that they apparently have to swim through to get there 
get them riled yeah. up. And them. Just keeps but, them off the radar. Our, my my major gripe is we like as a collective. Welcome to the group, Uli. Uh, we Thanks. just found this. <laughs> we found these crystals. What? Two months ago, a month and a half, if that. And we barely understand how they think. Doc over here has got more PhDs than I've got fingers. So he's just barely got a grasp on it. No offense. <laughs> well, and, these people, and they're using it like the same way that you would use a restraining bolt on a droid. Something's not right here. You mean in terms of how quickly they adopted the technology? Adopted or it was given to them. Well, and something I've noticed through that, especially through that PowerPoint that you put together for me, where have they been found? All along the outer rim, right? Well. That's where I mean, they've attacked? That's where they've been? I mean, do we have any hint at all of them being anywhere but the the outer edges of the galaxy? And just that one quadrant, that's the only place we've well, those that that area down there that's contested between the Republic and the Dominion. That's the only part that I, we've seen them, right? Right. But what we forget is how this galaxy, how all galaxies really are. They're a cluster of stars and star clusters and everything going around. It's one kind of contained system. If they come from outside of that thing. They can approach it from any direction they want, and we wouldn't even see it. How do we not know that they're not everywhere in the Outer Rim, and we just haven't caught them yet? We don't know anything about them. If they can travel from outside the galaxy into one, that's not something I've ever heard of being done before. And who's to say they are from outside this galaxy? Maybe they've been here this whole time, waiting for some signal. Well, it could be a creation of the Sith. I mean, who knows? <laughs> it's not outside the realm of possibilities here. I've seen them do some... I've heard them. If, if even what I've heard is half true, it's something the Sith are capable of. I don't know if they'd ever do it, but... I mean, we just don't know enough. I, I think it would be... We probably need to go find more to get their pattern really yeah. get some answers one thing i think we can all agree on is we don't know enough yeah it's one thing you learn as a student <clears throat> learning from all the masters is you never ever learn enough even when you're a master you never stop learning so one what thing would be, dash... be... Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you... one one thing that dash would kind of want to look at as we go through the ship is to see kind of two facets. One, how the Mandalorians, and this is kind of his background in doing some of these operations. You'd like to know how the Mandalorians approach this, what they use to get into the ship, how did they approach the ship, how did they breach through the ship, um, and then two, how did the Crusaders defend as they were breaching? Um, what doors maybe were heavily fortified, what doors could easily be like either blown open or cut open, just to kind of get a general sense of how the the operation went down and how the defense of, of the ship went down as we progressed through. Definitely, uh, make, uh, I'll give you your choice of perception, insight, or investigation uh, as you go through. Hell, I'm curious too, damn. <laughs> Uh, we'll go ahead I and give it an investigation it. here. I've been rolling terrible, so hey, well, there we solid. go. Look at you bucking those trends. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hell yeah, Dash. You take a look. Uh, in so one of the things that calls to you right away, just with your own background, is you take a look at some of the kind of recently patched over points, uh, and you can see uh, most of them look like they were caused by breaching charges. Uh, so you see, they come in. Uh, because they're not in the ship, so they're just floating around uh, with their jetpacks on. They put place breaching charges on. Uh, and as far as you'll know a little of this just offhand, just Mandalorian culture, uh, it's hard to uh, for a ship in space to kind of pick up people if they're not like, uh, if they move just at the right speed, especially if they pick a spot where they know people have to kind of reorient from hyperspace. So they have to kind of go from one lane to another. 
Uh, if they go quiet, they can get in there before people really notice they're there. Uh, so you don't see it initially, kind of as you're walking through the ship, uh, even by some of these marks, much sign of resistance. Uh, as you get closer, uh, kind of down closer towards the uh, the cargo holds and the deeper portions of the ship, you do start to see some blaster marks here and there. Uh, but it, it doesn't look like there was a kind of a coordinated resistance. Uh, it looks like uh, whoever uh, the Mandalorians kind of put down whoever was in here pretty quickly and efficiently. Uh, but getting in, mostly, uh, mostly uh, breaching charges, but you do see a couple spots where it looked like fusion cutters may have done the work uh, or something else pretty hot as well. All right. So as we're kind of going through, then I'll, I'll, I'll point some of it out to VARs, especially the breaching charges. And she's like, that's pretty good work. Almost as good as what I could do. But I, <laughs> I respect the Mandalorians. <laughs> we could always use somebody of your uh, talents if you're ever interested. Uh, maybe. Maybe. It's a wild place. Who knows what we'll find in the galaxy, man. <clears throat> Perfect. Well, are you guys uh, going to the cargo hold or the living quarters next? Um, living quarters would probably be more along the way, right? Yeah, they, uh, so they'd be the closer one. Yeah. Okay. Might as well. Did they have any survivors that they captured from um, the crew? Unfortunately, the Mandalorians did not leave it. All they didn't right. have I questions until they got to the cargo uh, hold. And they're like, they're yeah. like, Nobody's allowed to answer these questions. <laughs> yeah. What do you know? Oh, the security cam footage got wiped. Damn. Oh, no. Who did no, this? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just making sure. I'm like, if there was someone to interrogate, we could have maybe gotten some answers. But yeah. no, nope. Mandalorians hit this thing, not the Republic. So it's. <laughs> What do you mean? The Mandos just showed up and it was like this. <laughs> it was, it was like, oh, shit. They invited them in for punch and pie. They just rescued a group of slaves. Like, they, they're here. It's true. It's it's like, this is a humanitarian mission. Guys. I really do appreciate this slanderous talk. <laughs> in all fairness, though, I do respect the tactic. It's pretty, pretty bold. It's knock, bold. knock. Kaboom. And to do it in person, too. That's That's even more impressive. Because imagine if that, that jetpack just stops working and you go off that way. You just keep going until you hit something. <laughs> Space is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Space I've seen that movie with George Clooney. That's what happens. <laughs> Looking around the living quarters, is there any... Um, does it look like one... There's like any one like a uh, captain's bed or like one like where like someone who might have been of more higher status than the rest you do slept. Uh, so you see kind of like a, a little hammock. Uh, so all of the the beds are kind of hammocks, but most of them are kind of like bunk hammocks for like a better way to put it, where they're kind of multiple uh, on top of each other. But the, excuse me, there is one that's kind of on its own, uh, and you do see kind of like a little little chest or a case beneath it, like a little kind of storage locker beneath uh, all of the hammocks, uh, but definitely one in front of that one as well. We'll just point that out and be like, well, if we were to start anywhere, maybe with the big guys over there, if anybody's going to know anything. Although maybe one of his subordinates would be dumb enough to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> big, uh, Make, somebody can make a perception check and somebody can also can make an investigation check. I've got perception. I can do that one. I'll go Come investigation. Uh... Oh. <clears throat> Uli, as you look around the room, uh, you kind of, as you think about notes and pe being dumb enough to write things down, uh, you look around the room and you see, uh, not by the captain's bunk, uh, but by... Uh, just kind of one of the top bunks, uh, the kind of top hammock bunks that are scattered throughout the room. Uh, you see that there's kind of like a loose metal tile there. And it doesn't look like it's like loose like because the Mandalorians blew it to hell. It looks like it's kind of almost intentionally just a little out there. Uh, pulling it out, you actually do find a note within there. Uh, and you see the notepad. Uh, so it is 
Uh, or oh, Caesar was the one that spoke it. It is written in Shri Wook. Uh, but you can probably, if what you have time, find a translating service. Actually, Caesar's there. I'll just have him translate it for you. Uh, so basically, uh, it says, uh, lost one of my pack hiking through the Criffin Shadowlands to Orsa's lab just to pick up another batch of traitors. That doesn't sit right with me. It's like my own people. But Karshek said they'd serve the cause, and the Liberator is pleased with what we've done. One day the galaxy will be liberated, and even if that lab haunts my dreams until the day I die, it'll all be worth it. Uh, and then flipping it over on the back, because uh, this guy wasn't the brightest, uh, you see uh, some notes uh, that look like, uh, not notes, but numbers. Uh, and it probably takes you a minute, but to put it together, it looks like kind of uh, coordinates for a place in Kashyyyk, uh, deep within the forest uh, below uh I'm going to butcher this. Um, Rukoro. You're taking notes on a criminal fucking conspiracy? <laughs> <laughs> he did. Thank you, dumb minion. <laughs> like, well, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we can look through their stuff and see if there's something to take, but that feels wrong. I mean, they were slavers, but... <laughs> yeah. That Does note is actually titled "Dear Authorities," <laughs> <laughs> to whom it may concern, to the Dominion or the Republic, whoever catches us. <laughs> oh, man. Sweet. It was oh. me. <laughs> actually, Vars, uh, what is yeah. the rule? I'm assuming I know the rule, but what is the rule for when Mandos take a ship? If we were to rifle through these belongings and maybe take a few things that we could scratch up for use. Would they? I mean, would they care? What we told them, they're dead. The Mandos? No, the. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume that the ship is mostly untouched. It still have the it has the Crusader stuff on there. So once they saw the Wookiee slaves uh, and with yeah. the weird coral implant, they they didn't kind of because you know Mandalorians usually strip mine stuff like this. Uh, they mm -hmm. kind of left it alone. Ah. Oh. I mean, looking around, it's uh, a cursory glance around. It's all kind of crap, right? Oh, yeah. It's not like not many frills, not much around. Like it's. Uh, I would be looking for medical supplies. That's about if, it. If you can find something worth keeping in this crap heap, it's <laughs> an em empty syringe or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe a, a, a spoon with some scorch marks. <laughs> That's a vibe that I'm getting in my head. This is like a, like, like a space like heroin house. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, you don't find any medical supplies with that perception check. The one thing okay. you do find, um, just outside the living quarters, it's like a little space. Uh, and it's not like a huge space. It's like usually where they'd have like, uh, like on the Falcon, it's where they'd have had the Dijark table uh, and like uh, entertainment and things for people to do. Uh, you see kind of like a couple of blades laid down uh, and the two like vibro blades. Uh, you see they've made a little ring within there too. Uh, and you see that they, they spend a lot of their time uh, between or between the long voyages of hyperspace, just straight fighting each other, training. Ooh, um, I was gonna say probably nothing you could actually glean from their techniques or anything. Just sitting there, it's just two blade, like their Rick blades, like the big ones they got. Or uh, so yeah, what? Uh, so what is a, a Rick blade? Uh, the other is just more of a kind of standard Bible blade, uh, kind of more suited for human hands. Like well. It's like I have one thing in common with these people. It's like whatever they are, they're practicing for something. And if that notes any indication, they're, they're I don't know what they're building, but someone or someone's helping them. You mentioned something about a lab and that maybe this is what they do. Pass the time. Take a couple of them up here and train them and get them fighting fit. Does that sound anything familiar to you? I don't know much about these Crusaders. Do they train their own troops? Uh, they, they also, you guys, the lore free for this one, because they are more of a, 
they're a movement more than like kind of a, a nation or a faction. They've taken a couple planets, uh, mostly military or not military, militaristic species. Uh, so right now, uh, so Wookiees are kind of an odd one for them to take, but the Wookiees have had a rough go over the last 20 years uh, between being conquered by the Dominion, the Republic taking them back, Dominion trying to take them back again, and then the Hapens eventually taking them from the Dominion. Uh, they've they've been they, they've been kind of pushed around, and they've gotten a little bit more militant than they traditionally are. Uh, and uh, so they've uh, the, the Crusaders kind of sunk their hooks in, and they've got a pretty self-reliant philosophy. Uh, they think galactic nations and galactic organizations bring doom to pretty much the world, that the, the galaxy is weaker for uh, galactic nations, and they recommend strength, uh, inner strength, and kind of uh, individual planets and systems to stand on their own uh, and make sure their people are strong enough to defend themselves. Uh, so really strength-based philosophy. <clears throat> Oh, and I forgot, Talos, you rolled too. Uh, so you also find something in there. <laughs> I think I actually gave a little bit of that away. Uh, but you do find one of the few pieces of technology uh, that you see on the ship. Uh, this is within the captain's quarter. You find it under this little false bed within the uh, footlocker, kind of a little false bottom within there. Uh, you find a data pad. Uh, and within that data pad, uh, you find a recorded speech from the Liberator. Uh, and for those, uh, it's Liberator is basically almost a near mythological figure to the Crusaders. Uh, he's a, like, nobody's really laid eyes on him. Public intelligence hasn't. Zerka, uh, Zerka's uh, research division hasn't been able to kind of determine who he is, what he is. Uh, but he's kind of mysterious, moves from planet to planet, and tries to encourage Crusader revolts and then to seize the planet. Uh, and basically, in this speech, uh, you kind of, it's like a fiery speech. Uh, and actually, I'll give you a little piece of it. Uh, so you kind of, uh, it's a little hollow, or so it's on the data pad, you see kind of a hollow out there. Uh, and you see a man with a, just kind of a metal mask over his face. Uh, the mask is uh, black and silver uh, and kind of construed towards like a facial structure. So kind of think like the, it's like a, almost like a face mask uh, that kind of mimics like a person's facial structure. Uh, and within it, he kind of just goes through just fire and brimstone. The galaxy is lost. The Dominion and the Republic have sent us into war uh, to fight over the scraps for their force users to be able to command us all. Hear me out. Don't believe just because the Republic talks about peace and equality that the Jedi will not rule over all. Uh, or because the Dominion tries to flee slaves, uh, that the Sith Lords will not reign over the rest of us. They all are out for blood. They, when their weakness, they have joined together uh, and have attempted to push around the rest of the galaxy. But they've forgotten the people. The people will rise up. Those without that cursed metachlorians in their blood, or those who now have the weakness to seek out galactic comfort, will rise up and overthrow them. Crusaders, join me. Recruit any who will stand for the cause and work to overthrow our oppressors. Only through blood shall we have freedom. Uh, and you see it in, uh, and basically you see some articles pinned to there, and a lot of the articles pinned to that speech are anti-force user, anti-republic, uh, and the surprising thing too, you see a lot of anti-technology one too. Uh, so ones that are against technology that's not like unwarfare based technology. Uh, so it's you see kind of it's like almost it's, it's, reading through it, I won't make you guys make a check for it. It's super hypocritical. Uh, but they, uh, they they give allowances for like using blasters, using ships, because you need to do that to spread the message. But other technology should be shied away from. Yeah, I will I will of course play the play the hollow recording and everybody can see and I'll just kind of you know in full view of everybody just whoever wants to look over my shoulder and whatnot, um, glancing at the articles and just kind of like, okay. Um, so who wants to sign up to be a Mandalorian or rather a Crusader now? No? <laughs> huh? huh? Okay. Do they pay yeah. better than Zerka? Yeah. Dash is like nodding to this. He's like, yeah, yeah. He's making a little bit of sense <laughs> there. Not saying I'm joining him, just he makes some sense. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, definitely, definitely a pretty um, over the top uh, individual that we have here. But this could be, who knows? We'll save this for later. I'll definitely uh, stash that data pad if there um, if there's nothing else to find on that. I'll definitely stash that data pad and see if there's anything else that I can uh, glean from it later potentially. Um, especially since that that person's uh, I don't know on the top five of find this person and take them down, um, or maybe maybe I should give that to Vars. Actually, it seems a little bit more personal to you. Huh? No, screw this guy. So he was that speech like um, like you can tell it was like preparation, like the person who had the data pad was helping maybe prepare the speech. Oh, so this one looks like, it looks like, and actually I should have said this too. Uh, so this is like saved like in his like favorites. Uh, he's watched this a lot. Uh, so this, uh, that he helped prepare it, but this is like, uh, it's almost become a ritual to watch it for him. Indoctrination. Also. Gotcha. <laughs> is uh, okay. Just, to get the like the, I, the like the level of myth behind the liberator, is this the first time that we've actually heard his voice, or is this like because uh, I don't know that if maybe he broadcasts his message to his followers, but he keeps as, as much about himself private as possible. <clears throat> so uh, not the first time you've seen his voice or seen his face. Uh, I actually should have mentioned this too, but with this, you saw he was speaking in front of a crowd. Uh, and you see that this was actually on Kashyyyk. Uh, so you see kind of the worship trees and all that behind them. Uh, and you see this is one of the few times, because you've seen speeches and things like that from the Liberator, but it's always been uh, either just him or just a couple people standing behind him. Uh, this is one of the few times that you've actually seen him in the wild or uh, not from whatever his control position is. Hmm. Is, there a, uh, is there a date on that speech? Like when it occurred. Oh, definitely. So, stink, th boy. <laughs> <laughs> so this took place about three months ago. Okay. I was hoping. <laughs> Same boat. Yeah. Is the so the have the Crusaders been around longer than that? Oh yeah. So the Crusaders have been around for about three years. Three years. Okay. Have they? Well, like, what, did they actually take a significant amount of territory in the beginning, or has it just been small? Little so ones here and there. Mostly, so this is like the only like in the last probably about six seven months have they been in a position to take planets. Uh, okay. So they, they've uh, they've caused riots, they've caused uh, issues, they've beat up on the Republic, the many other like, galactic nations. Uh, but only recently have they been kind of organized enough to begin taking their okay. planets. And the Liberator's been known about the whole three years, or is that a recent? Uh, well. Definitely, like uh, most of the three years. Uh, so the Crusaders were around for a little bit before people put the Liberator to them, uh, but definitely after they, they kind of got more prominence, right. the Liberator's been around. So yeah. wears a Doctor Doom mask, and he's been around <laughs> the whole time. So I'm just yeah, I'm trying to get a feel for this person. Might have to see Doctor Doom. More that has person. a nice ring to it. <laughs> so I've got to find a cool picture. Maybe I'll just use Doctor Doom. I don't have a cool picture for him yet. <laughs> I, I don't mean, have a cool. <laughs> it's a cool. It's Doctor Doom is cool, man. <laughs> I'll tell you. So they've been they've been at this for about three years, and suddenly they start becoming very successful within what the last six months, and all of a sudden we find them with these crystalled up Wookies in the cargo bay. This stinks. Yeah. The you think someone's helping them. <laughs> yeah. The, the response yeah. from everyone else, the Republic, the uh, the. Dominion, even the Mandalorians, do they just kind of ignore them as just kind of crazies they'll deal with later? There's bigger issues or or because they don't really have any allies, right? They have no allies. And until six yeah. months ago, that was the issue. It was a local, it was a planetary thing where uh, basically yeah. planetary police dealt with them. Uh, but after they started taking planets from, uh, they've taken planet pretty much from everybody so far. Uh, what They took the uh, Kashyyyk from the Hapens. Uh, they took uh, one from, I forgot who they took from, uh, the Dominion. They take a planet from the Hut space. Uh, they become more of an issue. Uh, but the hard thing is they, they, a lot of the planets haven't, or the governments haven't been able to dedicate resources to it because they're fighting amongst each other. Uh, so that's why Kashyyyk has remained independent from the Hapens. They can't move enough of their fleet or the Republic, the Mandalorians, or the Dominions may 
套装。And just based on where the wheel is, we are a hell of a lot closer to the Kiss Sheik than we are. Uh... Sen Senpidal? I'm. Oh, Serpidal? Serp yeah. Yeah, you guys I are a lot closer to Kiss Sheik. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also a butcher today. Yeah, the Star Wars ones are hard because you never hear about loud until you have to say yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. It's or else you go on it. Yeah, but even then, <sighs> I've heard so many different pronunciations. You want to travel to Hoth? Apparently that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. It's not hot. I'm like, no. <laughs> no that's horrible. That ruins everything. I know. Oh, that's how George is. Lucas says it was. I'm like, I'm sorry. I love you, George Lucas, but no. No. Oh. Yeah, George, I, I yeah. <laughs> you created the world you created, love. that's wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's like the, the the GIF guy. Oh yeah, he did that too. Yeah. yeah. It's roughly supposed to be GIF. It is because he named it to be like the peanut butter as a joke. And then turns out people didn't find that funny. And now there's like a whole oh, war no. online. <laughs> <laughs> he started the civil war online. <laughs> well, if um, it doesn't look like there's much, much else to find in here. So um, I guess the, the cargo hold would be next. Perfect. Uh, so as you guys walked out of the cargo hold, uh, the stench that's been permeated the air intensifies. Uh, and like you, kind of the wookie and just kind of like this this unwashed scent was like the top level. Uh, below, you got to get definitely more of a reek of that, but also a little bit more of a like barnyard, like a, like almost like a, a manger type smell. Uh, you smell uh, definitely just kind of like a well, people being clapped in close proximity, but definitely a little bit more feral, a little bit more animalistic as you guys get down there. Uh, and everybody, give me a, uh, anybody who's proficient in perception, give me a perception check. Nice. It's a long time. Today. Yeah. So uh, Vars and Uli, you guys hit the scene hard. Like you guys are... Uh, senses open, uh, looking through. Uh, one of the things that really kind of strikes out to you guys uh, is you see marks on the floor, uh, and like uh, you see, like you, you see, kind of the usual scuffs and things like that of people being held in close proximity. Even uh, some marks where it looks like somebody may have been kind of punching or trying to uh, break free uh, from the, the facility. But the thing that really kind of catches your guys' eye uh, is you see some deep gouges within the floor. Uh, you know, Wookiees have claws. Like, that's that's not unusual. But these gouges are probably about something two or three times the size of a Wookiee. Uh, something big was uh, called in here before, and it left pretty deep claw marks within uh, the Durasteel floor of the cargo hold. Yeah, uh, is there any way to tell, like, is it like a three-fingered claw, five-fingered, like, like oh, narrow down what it could be? Yeah, so it is a... a a three-fingered claw, I'll say. Three-fingered claw. Okay. It's like, what else are they keeping in here? Would I be able to? Uh, I mean, I didn't. I I don't have proficiency in perception, but um, I am uh, sure that we and I would like hey, take a look at this. Yeah. Uli, uh, maybe you could help me out with this. Um, sure. Any any ideas uh, of what this? What this could be because this is definitely not a this is not a Wookiee right here. I can I can see that much. So I guess would we have any sort of wildlife data on like Cernpedal and uh, Kashik, like anything that might fit the bill? Of, and how large is the area we're in? So it's a uh, it's a pretty large cargo hold. So uh, it's probably about. 40 feet by 40 feet so it's uh it's definitely making up most of the bottom level of how the tall is it uh we'll say about uh like 15 feet okay so i'm just trying to think sure. that'll narrow it down a bit but you know could be anything from a gun dark to a do back i mean i don't really know how calm again this is a little metagamey but how common is the knowledge that the Shadowlands hosts a uh, a wide array of dangerous creatures. Is that something that our characters would be privy to, or I think Caesar mentioned that last time too. So you you guys would definitely know that the Shadowlands, uh, it's 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 privy to some of the most dangerous creatures within 
uh, within the galaxy. Well, considering their uh, their flight logs between Kashyyyk and Serpendal. Could be something particularly nasty that was in here. Yeah. Maybe they have some. Is there sign. any way to uh, potentially narrow it down or identify it based off these marks? Unfortunately, with the claw marks, uh, there's really not a, a kind of a way to match it up. Uh, but one of the things I'll give you guys for it's big, it was heavy, uh, and, and it was not happy being in there. It's, uh, it's... I have an idea. I just don't know how to. <laughs> I can't. I don't want to say it. I will. Um... I'll uh, turn on the hollow recorder that I've got real quick, where wherever that is or however it looks, and uh, make sure that I'm in a position to just kind of get a good uh, overview shot of it um, for measurement or analysis later. Or alternatively, whenever I see whatever matches this, I can go, oh, yeah, that's, that's definitely it, and we should go the opposite direction. <laughs> Perhaps there's a cam system too or maybe some sort of log that they kept of what they were transporting we got one of them dumb enough to write down their base location <laughs> manifest in the cargo maybe hold? there's no. a manifest somewhere <laughs> what's the biggest and scariest thing of the shadowlands that dash has ever heard of whether it's real or unreal and he's going to say course. that's it <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh, what's the biggest thing? Uh, they've got uh, why sh shock spiders, which is probably like the most common creepy thing that people talk about from Kashyyyk. Uh, there have been rumors of some other more exotic creatures there, though. Uh, and probably actually the tallest tale that Dash may have heard uh, of a being on Kashyyyk, and no people haven't spotted this one for hundreds of years. Uh, but rumors of a Terran attack have been uh, talked about of being on Kashyyyk. So he's just going to announce with just confidence it's a Terran attack? I believe that's the way it's said. I have no idea, though. Actually, it's I a have... Terran attack? <laughs> Guaranteed, 100%. <laughs> I saw one once. That's it. <laughs> do we know what that is? Like, do we have any sort of idea? Uh, everybody, make a lore check. Because uh, Dash, maybe not. Maybe Dash may not even know exactly what a Terran attack is. Uh, oh, Dash does. Dash does. <laughs> <laughs> he absolutely knows what it is. <laughs> I seen one. Sweet. Oh yeah, we just have four people today. Uh, yeah, so Dash and Talus, you guys know uh, for sure. So Terran attacks are these big, monstrous creatures. Uh, they are uh, bipedal, heavily armored. Uh, ancient with tw twenty plus. You guys know a little bit of the our lore about them too. Uh, so they're they're force hunters. They hunt force users. Uh, they were made by uh, the Sith during, I think, the Hundred Years' War, uh, the real, real way back in the ancient Republic. Uh, and they were used, made by Sith alchemy, uh, and they're very resistant to Force users, and like, they're the perfect Force-hunting creature. Uh, they can go up, uh, they can, their hide can withstand lightsabers, uh, they're very resistant to Force powers, uh, they're just, they're monsters of creatures already, uh, because they've been magically almost bio-engineered by Sith science and alchemy. Wow. Huh. Yeah, um, I think it would ki it could kind of make sense for Talus to know a little bit about this uh, just with the scientific method uh, feature from my background, knowing a little bit of everything that's been maybe published or whatever. So it might not necessarily be like a, a direct publish of like, oh, Sith science has published this for the world to know about. But uh, somebody happened upon it and then kind of wrote about it. Um, oh. So actually seeing physical evidence of something that, you know, I've only briefly kind of read about or heard about. It's, uh, it's a little intimidating, especially since I hate spiders <laughs> as well. Uh, why shocks, Terran tax, uh, or however you say that. Um, yeah. I'm uh, definitely looking forward to patching you guys up and uh, hiding behind a giant tree. <laughs> you said these things hunt force users? Oh, yeah. Huh. So I'm going to say that there was a there's a rumor uh, that was just told to, to all of the Republic soldiers 
that the Dominion were using these against as to fight the Jedi as we would fight with them. Probably untrue. doesn't matter. That's what he's always been told. So whenever he's in a battle and you hear something, like a loud bang or a noise or something behind a door, it's always a Terran tech. Like every time, they're like, that's it. And like then it'll open it up be like a rain core. It doesn't matter. The Terran tech is obviously gone. And so, like, that's always been, like, the boogeyman of every operation against the Dominion. And the Dominion actually has, they, they haven't been able to make new ones, but they have kind of found ones and twist them to their cause. Uh, and actually, with that, Talos, too, so you you may not have seen so many reports. You've definitely seen a little bit of reports on the Terrence attacks, but uh, being a biologist and uh, all the, the degrees that he have, has in biology... You probably would have seen a little bit on Sith Alchemy, not enough to understand how they do what they do because you don't have the Force aspect. Uh, but the Sith yeah. uh, are also known uh, for, and Dominion uses this pretty heavily, uh, for taking beasts, twisting them and vibing them with some dark side energy and unleashing them on the battlefield and just saying, hey, whatever happens, happens. Go get them, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, this, is a, this is a lot of uh, different information just coming into play. These guys, these guys are... Up in newcomers three years ago, then within the last six months, they 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 start making um, you know leaps, and then they've got pretty you know essentially this bong tech, and now they've also got Sith Sith created um, potentially Sith created um, beasts that they're also transporting. This is um, this is not great. Combined with that anti-force user rhetoric, it all starts making sense, that, doesn't it? Anti-force, anti-tech. Yeah. Hmm. I well. Would everybody in the group know about Uli's force sensitivity? I don't think he mentioned it. I don't, I don't think he's mentioned it. Okay. So well, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> Just, well, I can tell you that. There are a lot of people that don't have the training of the Jedi or the Sith, and if something like this is let loose and just indiscriminately starts rounding people up, that's... I don't even need to tell you how that's bad, right? Little kids running away scared, people frightened for their lives, that feeds one side of the Force and one side only. Well, I, They're making more monsters than they're killing, that's for sure. But I don't think they realize it. Either way, I think these things probably pose a greater danger than they are aware of, which means that they're not being told what this stuff actually is or does. Or maybe they just don't care. Maybe that's even worse. Yeah, I, I don't think they're uh, being naive and deceived. Mm. Something tells me they're playing along. Oh, man, the things people do to be free. Yeah, well. I don't blame them. I just. Why can't people just think things through a little bit more, you know? Uh, anyway. Is there any sort of. This is going to be a weird question. Is there any sort of like animal dung? Like, do they clean this place out before each shift? Uh, so you don't see any like uh, like any excrement or anything like that. So it does look like they do do some okay, okay. some type of uh, some type of cleaning. I'll say. Okay, I was gonna look for anything that like I could scoop up with the bioanalysis or geneticist kit and maybe try to do some sort of DNA tracing when we get to the equipment. But if there's nothing that looks biologically like it came from something other than a Wookiee or like a humanoid, I probably wouldn't make any attempt for it. Uh, make an investigation, Jack. All right. Or nature, your choice. Investigate. Let's go with nature, because investigation is... Can I, uh, can I assist him on that? Oh, for sure. Oh, so yeah. advantage. Um, Twice as good. <laughs> Doubled up on that one. Yeah. So you go through, uh, and you see mostly just kept a lot of Wookiee fur. Uh, this kind of, it looks like uh, it looks like a Wookiee just kind of like exploded on the with how much fur is around, and it's just kind of contaminating most of the samples, uh, making it hard to find uh, to find anything that would kind of stand on its own for a good genetic scan. Okay. Like, well, I tried, but yeah, you know, Wookiee shed like everything. Oh well. What were you, what were you looking for? 
Signs of Do you want to know what I was looking for, or is that just like basic inquiry? You know, <laughs> don't know if I want to tell you what I was looking for. <laughs> it gets more I, I'm more embarrassed. <laughs> I was looking for they any were... sort of biological trace they had, including oh. poop, including <laughs> poop. So, who do? <laughs> we're scientists. It's what we do. You get deep down it's in the poodoo and oh, man. for science, as long as we write it down, <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> That's what we decided. You're just knee you you deep in down. poodoo for nothing. <laughs> well, I was just going to like take this in and be like, well, I'm glad my talents lie elsewhere. And just walk <laughs> off. Well, we have learned quite a bit, though. I mean, we have a lot more questions now, but say that's something at least a jumping off point we have coordinates to there my god i wish everybody was this stupid do you think these user and vong right wrote down like what they're gonna do like we can just be like go to the end where they meet them there and be like no yeah they got plants out of war plan for the galaxy you just gotta find it it's, gonna find it. it's just right there yeah. it's like written in Korean. <laughs> we was here <laughs> Oh, we're going to be so lucky. Well, unless anybody else has any bright ideas, I'm out of anything. I mean, I'm look at me. I'm rummaging around in their poop, for God's sake. This is <laughs> Did, time, to, uh, time to leave. <laughs> were there any other rooms such as, uh, or any other, yeah, any other rooms on the ship? Um, I guess the last thing that I could potentially think of uh, to beat a dead ship is, uh, is there... Is there a medical uh, lab or anything like that? Like, did they did they put um, did they do this to the Wookies on the ship, or was it somewhere else? I guess is what I'm trying to trying to find the answer to. For sure, no rule necessary. You don't see any medical labs or anything that would be. Uh, you don't if you know they don't need sterile condition to put those coral implants in, but definitely nothing in there that would suggest they could just do it on the ship, uh, and. Okay. Uh, with uh, the note that you got too, uh, with them kind of picking up the the batch of traders on the the lab in the Shadowlands, uh, you'd probably guess they kind of picked them up pre-checked. Hmm. Right. Okay. There's one last thing that's nagging at me. Um, it, it's a minimalist ship, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it's like it's a like a light freighter. Is mm -hmm. that what it was? Okay. Is there any sort of like shielding for where they were keeping the car well cargo for lack of a better word like anything to like hide their their life signs or anything from scanners so nothing to, to hide uh, life signs from scanners on that side uh you probably guess that they got caught they would just try to talk their way out of it uh or they've got something else to work with okay i was just trying to one other way to figure out how the hell they get that far without in deep enemy territory with no one touching them four times so or maybe somebody did would, would yeah. engineering uh like be a location that we could go to to check out maybe their engines and see if there's any sort of modifications there and that's uh no role necessary for this one too that's kind of an interesting thing you don't see any any enhancements to their drive any enhancements to their wow. their stealth uh they, they do take a, a pretty a somewhat direct route to the kind of the outer rim. Uh, they do kind of take kind of maneuver through some of the, the hyperway, the lanes. Uh, but yeah, no, nothing that really stands out. Okay. Well, there could be a bunch of these ships for all we know. We just got lucky that, that we found this one. Yes, in general, like with the wars going on, when you travel um, these like, and this is just kind of a, a bigger, broader question for the entire galaxy. When you travel between, say, the Dominion space to the Crusader space or Republic space to Dominion space, etc., on one of these bigger uh, highways or uh, uh, hyperspace lanes, are they generally like checkpoints that pull you out of hyperspace to check before you enter, or is it pretty free flowing? So it depends because it's not usually because interdictor interdictor tech is really rare for this okay. point in time. They have it, but it's not like it's uh, common enough they could seed their hyperlanes with it. 
Uh, but they do usually do have checkpoints at like the major reversion spots where people have to kind of change and go to a, like, kind of re-navigate through to a different lane. Uh, and mm-hmm. then they usually do, the Republic has like these checkpoints with cruisers there to kind of scan and speak to ships. Dominion as well, even the huts and Zerka has those too for their controlled space areas. So uh, you you probably guess they'd have to have gone through some of these checkpoints and survived. Crap. So they've got people inside, so to speak. Maybe. Well, no, unfortunately, it, maybe it's just some lazy worker not doing their job. That's literally what it can come down to. Look at this idiot. He wrote down their plan, <laughs> <laughs> what they're going to do. I, mean, I hate to say it, but not everybody's got 12 PhDs like you, Doc. <laughs> Some people are not very bright. Well, as much as I hope that it's an incompetence, we can't dismiss the possibility I mean, who knows? of what coll- collaborators within the Dominion too. I mean, can you imagine if their head honcho found out about that? Hey, they somebody's be getting a field promotion is what's going to happen they a lot they, of field promotions yeah they would destroy an entire planet maybe <laughs> probably and i'll um, give you this one for free kali with uh, the kalish people does seem like prime crusader territory uh the kalish for anybody who doesn't know they're the uh general grievances people they're really warrior spirit type people uh mm-hmm. got the cool bone mask are the crimson masks in this one too? Ah, uh, so this is separate universes for the. the this is the play okay, by post okay. one, but they are in that, and they okay, they got wiped. They got wiped. All right. Well, either way, we're probably done with the ship, huh? And we got to oh. figure out what to do next with this. I thought we were going to Kashyyyk. Oh well, yeah, we're we're going to Kashyyyk. Well, that, if, if that was, you know. But, Hell yeah. You know, how hard we go to Kashyyyk, how, you know, how loud, how quiet, that kind of thing. Oh. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to tell you what to do with the ship, but, you know, Details. I'm just flying it, but mm-hmm. where we go, clearly, <laughs> clearly, I'll, I'll, I'll lean towards the good doc's knowledge. Yeah, it sounds like we're headed to Kashyyyk. We got some coordinates, we got a planet. Yeah. And as you guys exit the ship, uh, you do see uh, kind of kind of walking through. Uh, he's uh, not in his best guard garb, uh, but you do recognize uh, Wavaris. You would recognize him uh, for sure uh, as Commander Velku. Uh, and you see him kind of approaching. Uh, he's got two other so uh, clear and for you for Vars. It's easy to tell they're Mandalorians flanking behind him, uh, but they're, they're not wearing the armor. They're they're really looking nondescript. Uh, they're trying to look nondescript right now, uh, while still walking around with that Mandalorian air of I could just shoot you if I felt like it. Uh, but uh, they walk in. Uh, and Doku looks at the group and goes, "What'd you find?" Well. Looks like they've been moving back and forth between Kashyyyk and some planet that I keep forgetting the name of. Starts with an I got you. Serpendel. Ser- Serpendel. Serpendel. They've made that trip a few times. Looks like they've been transported more than Wookiees, though. We found some bigger than Wookiee claw marks in the cargo hold. None of you thought to clean that out. That's disgusting. <laughs> you see the uncle kind of shrugs and goes, I want to keep it pristine for you and your investigators. If that's pristine, then standards have fallen since I've been gone. Uh, uh, he's untouched, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's weird seeing you in casual clothes. Uh, didn't want to bring any attention to this. and Wanted to get your answer right away and not leave it to calm. So, yeah, I stripped down to civvies and Made my way out here. I feel overdressed now. <laughs> uh, um, well, besides that, then some idiot was nice enough to to scribble and 
what looked like crayon, a bunch of information about their operation and specific coordinates on Kashyyyk. We were thinking we'd make our way there, you know, have a polite conversation. We'd appreciate that. If you could make your way to Kashyyyk, uh, not bring any heat to the Mandalorians with this one and figure out what they got going on there. Uh, we'd we'd want to we want to know what's going on in the labs and kind of any connection between the Crusaders and the Vong forces. Uh, these invaders are as tough as you think they are. Uh, we don't need them having any footholds or any extra allies uh, in the mainlands. No, we definitely don't. I think all of us want to know more about this, right? Gesturing to everybody else present. Yeah. Yes, we have quite a few questions that have gone unanswered. Yeah. So? Okay. You see a gesture, it goes, uh, perfect. We'll, we'll make sure we compensate you and take care of you after you get back. Uh, and along those lines, and you kind of see him point to the, the stinky ship, uh, he goes, they've got transponders on there. It's a known quantity. If you want to take the ship, you're more than welcome to if you want to use that to make your way aboard Kashyyyk. Because uh, situation on the ground, Kashyyyk is in Crusader hands. Uh, they've got the whole planet. They've got a ragtag fleet around it. Uh, even if you bring your own ship, you need to go in quiet without drawing suspicion. Uh, so if you want to use theirs, get a little leg up, more power to you. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. So that's why he didn't clean it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take and uh, move the transponder to our ship? You definitely could. So with a good slicing score, you better move the transponder. It would still look, your ship would look physically different. Yep. yep. Uh, but uh, you could definitely kind of hack it through there. This is scary. Uh, look, I mean, it's a, that's a good idea. Here. I was actually thinking that. Um, <laughs> Use all the inspiration you need. I don't want to fly in the crap mobile. Oh, yeah, we, we do have inspiration. Okay. You guys did four out of five. I actually gave a couple over this session, too. So, uh, no, no, we don't do careful checks. I asked that last time. Okay, so we don't have a slicer here. So, Tinker's at disadvantage again. Okay, I will take my time on this. I can add temp boost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, eighteen, just enough. Uh, there's only a DC eighteen check for that, so uh, you are able to uh, maneuver, or kind of uh, break into the the system, take out the uh, the Crusader ship's transponder, uh, and eventually install it into the Novakana. Uh, so uh, basically, this transponder will kind of transmit that you are that Crusader ship, uh, but. On a, depending on the how close of a visual look they take at the ship, uh, the very sleek looking Novakata versus the uh, beat up ragtag uh, Crusader ship, uh, it made you all some suspicion. Uh, but it would allow you guys to bring your your ship uh, with you uh, and have a little bit more of the comforts you're used to and uh, better equipment that you're used to. Yeah. Is there a is there a way uh, to alternate between transponders? So maybe once we get X amount of systems out that we switch to the transponder code, or actually, now that I'm kind of thinking about it, once we, or before we get into maybe Dominion territory, because that's where we're headed, um, switching the code uh, and following the exact route that they're on. So at least while we're in, I don't even know if it exists, uh, friendlier territories we kind of keep the current transponder and then switch for sure you shouldn't uh, nice thing is you won't need to go through dominion territory uh you will go through mandalorian space and Velko will promise you safe passage through mandalorian space uh and you just okay. have to go through haven space uh and then i'm um, gonna make your way towards kashik uh you could definitely take that same path that they've taken too oh gosh i i completely thought that we were going to the uh to, I, I was thinking oh the serpentale yeah Serpindale for some reason i was looking at the map thinking serpentale i i stinking kashik but looking at serpentale okay yeah. it's all the, it's all the phds i'm sorry guys 
<laughs> Sweet. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. Uh, so we'll be back 8 15 uh, and then make the journey for the Kashyyyk. Uh, so everybody uh, join us back about five minutes and uh, we'll see how it goes for the group. All right. All right. Hey. hey. Welcome back, everyone. And I was just looking, I realized I have not updated my break screen for July yet. Uh, but uh, so for next, uh, well, overall for this week, we've got uh, just just Invasion this week. But next week, we'll have uh, the game of the month, uh, the Lord of the Rings one ring uh, one shot. So join us for that. Uh, we'll be raffling off a copy of the PDF. So make sure to come hang out and uh, if you're not subscribed, let me throw it into the chat. Check out my YouTube. Uh, I've done just did a video on how to build a PC using that system. So uh, check that out. Uh, it's a pretty cool system and probably the way to go uh, if uh, you wanted to play. Uh, I gotta get that Lord of the Rings fantasy with rather than trying to cobble five E towards it. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, and uh, next week, we've got Stranded. So this will be uh, 6.30, same time, Eastern Standard Time, uh, Tuesday. Uh, we've got the Stranded campaign. Uh, this one will be run by uh, Keith. Uh, he's not on cam yet, but come check it out. We've got some crazy shenanigans there. The crew's kind of starting to unravel the, the mystery of what's going on in the planet. Uh, kind of figure out what's uh, kind of the, the worms that are burrowing beneath and kind of what the, uh, the moon's orbit has to do with all that. So come hang out with us uh, and see what we get up to there. Uh, but yeah, let's get back into it. So the crew just uh, installed their new transponder from the stinky ship uh, that the Crusaders had uh, and are preparing to go to Kashyyyk. Uh, before you guys leave the wheel, anything you want to do? Um, would we be able to, or would I be able to, uh, talk to the commander, um, before we start headed that way and just ask if I could, um, swing by the lab again and talk to the Verpine scientists just to see if I can get some, um, maybe a couple of extra vials. And then also we're going into some pretty dangerous territory, Kashyyyk and Crusaders, oh my, um, maybe some med packs, um, some other stuff i'm not i'm not i haven't done a roll yet but i'm gonna assume spiders uh there's some poison involved so maybe getting some uh anti-tox kits if that would be possible too one or two three seven hundred um <laughs> or i can just buy all this too that there's that too but it'd be a really simple request uh uh, Commander, do you mind if I swing by the lab and speak to your scientists, get uh, get a couple of med cats, uh, med kits, and um, some trauma kits, if or not trauma, anti tox kits, if possible. Yeah, so he, he'll, uh, he definitely, he'll say, uh, we can spare a few med packs. Uh, we don't have any anti tox kits in stock, uh, but you can take uh, three of our vials and we'll say, we'll give you a med pack a piece. Uh, so five med packs. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. This will definitely be helpful, considering what we might potentially be up against. Vars uh, is uh, looking to survive a little bit longer if he can. He wants to try to make some armor on the way. So nothing, nothing crazy. Just uh, some standard issue, like some standard items. 
but he just wants to get the materials required for him so he can do something on the way there. Perfect. Oh, yeah, and you guys will have about four days on ship, so. Yeah. Yeah, the, just get the materials for a, because my, uh, my dexterity is not all that high, uh, for weave armor. Okay. And you're just building that standard, so yeah, you can definitely kind of go through and find what you need uh, to make some good weave armor. Okay, subtracting five. It's uh, be half cost for it. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, it actually does, um, tell us, what's Workshop do again? Does it give it anything? Does it, just like you made faster? Or does it give you a discount? Uh, I have it on the ship, the ship description. Let me check it out. Uh, I think somebody's already reading it, but if you oh. uh, it increases your crafting amount towards the day, so it's five times your character level on top of the amount that you can already craft. Okay, so um, enough time then. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Sweet. Nice. So yeah, so craft it faster. It looks like it's the same cost, but definitely kind of save you some time there. Hell yeah. All right. Let me see. I know I can, if I can't find um, some anti-tox kits before we leave the station, I'm I'm happy to uh, just craft that myself on the way. Oh, the wheel, you could find, that's a standard item, and with the, or that's not even standard, that's a base item. Uh, and the wheel is one of those ones you could definitely find that pretty easy. Uh, it would just be a, a base cost for the, uh, the anti-tox. Uli does have one, too, so... Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, just between all of us. Okay. So I don't know who already still had med packs, if any, but everybody has one med pack now at least. I have three total on myself. I have um, four on Uli. You have four? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And then um, if you have one anti-tox, th I'll, I'll spend another because it comes with five charges. So I think if I get one and you have one, that's way more than enough to cover any additional people plus us. Uh, so... I will buy just the one, sir, and minus 600 credits. Oh, no, I'm poor. <laughs> yeah, you, guys have have poor, one you guys have a, poor, a little poor right now, aren't you? I you know, it, would actually, yeah. it actually would have been cheaper for me to just craft it myself because it would only cost me 300 versus uh, 600. If you want to, you, you got four days right. on the ship. Yeah, yeah. you got yeah, I think I'll I think I'll do that instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can make bombs, or I have a ton of mater materials still, so I can make bombs and stuff if anyone wants it. Grenades, munitions, whatever. Uh, you can make a make a bomb in my name. But I have... <laughs> Literally. <laughs> right now, I am very poor, so I will be accepting donations, and I will gladly put your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> how much does it? How much does it cost? Oh, I'm just. I'm good. I, 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 oh, okay. I pre-purchased a bunch. He it's bought like a ton. Out. I oh, forgot you... how much it was. Yeah. But it was... <laughs> I think it's like two k. Explosive materials. <laughs> it's it's on the ship cash. already. Don't worry. It's it's in a Footlocker under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> instead of the uh, instead of the dirty bomb, we call it the Dichi bomb. <laughs> <laughs> my family would be very proud of that. I'm sure. <laughs> Hang it up on the fridge. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so you guys are able to um, get any, any last-minute supplies you need. Velku sends you off, uh, and you got to go. Before, as you guys are heading out, pulls Vars aside and goes, we appreciate the sacrifices you've been willing to make for us. We need this intel, though, so don't take any unnecessary risk. Get in, find what the lab is. Find where the connections to the Vong are. Uh, get out. Just ghost it. Uh, we don't need you taking. Uh, try to take on the planet yourself. Uh, so keep yourself safe. Uh, and eventually, once this is all said and done, and we no longer need discretion, we'll make sure that we tell the people what you've done. Uh, and let them know that you've actually been a true true warrior for the Mandalore. It'd be nice not to get spit at while I'm in public, but yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, this is all over. Uh, you, you could put anybody who mistreated you in the place. <laughs> I don't think I'll have the days left to do it, but sure. Well, till next time, Captain. 
you kind of see him uh, pot his chest, uh, even without his Mandalorian armor on, and go, fly straight, shoot hard, don't ask questions. No. Well, I'll do more shooting than asking. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Uh, you see him walk off, uh, and you guys are able to board the Novakana uh, with your altered transponder signal uh, and begin making your way to Kashyyyk. Uh, so, uh, so you guys, first couple days, pretty uneventful. Uh, you guys are riding through the spaceways uh, and hyperspace, and nothing's really bothering you. Uh, but you do know you're going to, excuse me, come out at one some point uh, and have to transition to kind of make that last leg towards Kashyyyk uh, within heap and space. Uh, is there anything special you guys are doing that transition before you uh, emerge in heap and space? What do we know about how Hapens treat people who enter their space without them wanting them there? <laughs> And, and how you know as a person <laughs> how forcefully do they tell them to leave how would how much do we know so havens are not as closed off as they well actually let me, let me clarify that for their new conquered territory that they've taken from dominion havens aren't as closed off as they traditionally are uh now if you got into the hapes cluster they just they would <laughs> ask questions they would just inside the transitory mists yeah you're you got killed. you're you're, okay. you're just shot uh, within this, they've been pretty permissive within their new kind of conquered nation. Uh, yeah. They'll probably, uh, they, they, you, they're not going to shoot first. They're going to probably ask a few questions. I think Uli would, knowing that and knowing how great he is at talking to people, would hit the calm. He'd put down his sham that he's playing while he's just sitting there drifting in space. <laughs> ask the others, uh, any of you good at talking to these people? They stick me in a lab for a reason. I don't talk to people. Somebody who's well, better able to talk their way out of this probably should get up here and help. I would definitely be Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully hopefully we don't have to talk to them. Um, we do have a stealth device on the ship recently installed. Have not really had more than the one time to uh, test it out, but we could come in at the edge of the system and uh, stealth up and make our make our way towards Kashyyyk that way. Um, it is going to have an effect on our scanners, however. So us detecting things, it's gonna it's gonna take power away from that and make it a little bit more difficult for us on that side. So there's a trade. Do we want to interact directly, or do we want to try to come in um, quiet? Did we know from the old freighters, like telemetry data, like what path they would take? Like, you do have the, the path they would take. Yeah. I'm gonna say maybe we could follow that and then engage the stealth drive, like you said. And as long as we have, if we have something that's already there. And then we can visually see that something's changed. We can make those adjustments, but otherwise we, we wouldn't exactly be flying blind. It'd be more like taking a, a taking a photographic picture and then closing your eyes and then hoping you remembered where everything is kind of a thing. But I mean, it wouldn't, it would still get us in and out of there quietly. I don't, he so did say to go through it, that hape space um, would, because we're in a Zerka ship, would would it be abnormal for Zerka to be traveling kind of through this area? Zerka uh, is usually pretty not well liked, but due to necessity, accepted most places. Uh, they supply most of the arms for both Dominion Republic uh, and the heaps as well. Uh, so it wouldn't be out of the norm to see a, a Zerka ship. Hmm. Uh, well, in that case, good. Good idea there. It might be might be better to just not uh, not have the Crusader transponder until we get closer to Kashyyyk, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have to lie about being Zerka. Got two Zerka scientists on board now. <laughs> that is true. Not much deception there. We could prove it, too, if they, if they called I us. Got all, 
I got all my credentials and everything. So, yep, you could actually just explain exactly what we're doing using your twelve PhDs and be like, sure. <laughs> go for it. Taking the, the to the Serpentol Cern, station. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> just stop talking. Go, go, go. Shut up. Fine, fine. Just, Nerd. Just go. <laughs> Well, either way, it's your ship. I'm just piloting it. What do you want me to do? We could go um, the direct method. At least then they can't pretend and get uppity about it if we, you know, they catch us in a lie. Then, you know, that will make things yeah. worse. And I think I've talked about the I, Hapens I think... a little bit, too, but I'll give you a little bit of lore on the Hapens. Uh, they're a Star Wars one. They don't get used as enough as they should, though. I like them. Uh, they are, they're, 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 they call them near humans, but they're pretty much just pretty humans. I don't know why they're near humans, uh, but uh, they used to be a pirate race, or not pirate race, but like a pirate group uh, hiding out in this nebula cluster that they've got. Uh, and uh, they're, they don't like forest users much. They're very appearance obsessed. Uh, the weirdest thing about them, or not weirdest, but like the most interesting thing I'd say about them is they are a matriarchy too. Uh, so they're ruled by a queen mother, and they're uh, they're, they're actually super sexist against men. Kind of gets the norm, I guess. Uh, and uh, they're they're just a pretty species. A lot of spies. Um, got pretty like sleek. Like they have cool looking ships. They like model their ships after dragons too. So pretty cool looking ships actually overall. Uh, but. Usually they're a minor player, but within the within this universe, within the war uh, taking place between the Dominion and the Republic, they saw chances to expand and take recently acquired Dominion territory. They're allied with the Republic, but they took their territory from the Dominion that used to be the Republic's and haven't given it back. So uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's a strained ally, uh, kind of an alliance there. Hmm. Okay. Um. I mean, as for that decision, I I always enjoy the path of least resistance, whatever whatever is the easiest pathway forward and simplest as well. So I I vote just uh, keeping Zerka transponder uh, until, and that means we don't even have to hide either. So we can just go through the space. Uh, I'm a bio bioanalysis or I'm a biologist uh, scientist. Zerka making my way to Kashyyyk to take some samples. I mean, that's, here's my credentials. Also, I have my uh, co-scientist with me. I have assistant. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Uli, or assistant, whatever you want to be called, uh, who also is a, bio, uh, a biologist. So, <laughs> so, what did I do, guys? Does that, does that sound very convincing? It does. But, but going okay. to Kashyyyk, that might Would be going to Kashyyyk be a thing that we do? Is there somewhere else we can maybe say we're going in that neck of the woods that uh, maybe they wouldn't care about? Oh, let's buy Kashyyyk. Uh, let me yeah. look at yeah, it. Going to a Crusader planet, would that be weird for the Zergo, though? That would be my question. Hey, what do you know? I don't think that they play was well right there. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, yeah, that works. Home, yeah. Someone's home. My home planet is there. Amara, uh, <laughs> Hey, I'm just I'm just on leave. I'm on holiday leave, and uh, I thought I'd take these guys to a very. Uh, actually, is it? I need. I need, I can't remember Umbara. I, I think that they're slightly fascist. Um, I can't remember what their people are like, but I know it's really really dark. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I thought you were like an Uta for some reason. <laughs> no, I'm Umbara. Uh, yeah, they're very they're very tech savvy, but they're also very uh, focused on like politics and whatnot. Like at least the way the reading reading lore and cherry picking what I actually like from the internet, um, it's like uh, it's it's very hard to actually leave the planet unless you're in a position of power. So they kind of like keep you there and keep to themselves. And um, yeah, they're they're smart and intellectual. I think that's also in the description of them too, but I mean, we got a, we got a couple options here. If, if you guys uh, don't think that I should just say that we're going to Kashyyyk, uh, I could just say that we're going to Umbara. Well, don't tell them we're going to Maltok and I think we'll be fine. They ain't going to let us go there. But mm. yeah, I'm, that works for me. Sure. I'm driving, I'm taking you home. Basically yep. it for vacation. <laughs> Is it a vacation though? Does that sound realistic? 
Because the way you described it, it sounds kind of dark. <laughs> kind of like a place you'd want to leave and not Gosh. come back. Hey, I All mean, right. I'll fit in just fine. You guys will be behind bars. It's no big deal, but... <laughs> um, Wait with the ship, I guess. I just... I, okay, so we'll we'll say that we're we're, you know... Taking my ship, this is my crew, and we're going to Umbara. I'm of the DG family that people people know them. Um, should. Um, and then we'll just make sure that we're not being followed, and then Kashyyyk is, like, right there. So. Perfect. Uh, is that what you guys are going with? Makes sense to me. Uh, not that I don't have all the confidence in the world my newfangled friends, but if there is somebody good at talking, just in case, it might not hurt to have you up here. At least uh, whisper in my ear something to say. I think Caesar's the best with the charisma, <laughs> and he does not have the much charisma. You guys are a very uncharismatic squad. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So my persuasion is negative one. Um, As is mine. Yeah. This is mine. Uh, deception. Yeah, my, I have a eight charisma score. Yep. Oh, wait, let's, do it. Many dumps. Screw it. let's do it. Let's just try it. Let's just see how it goes. I, I have right. a zero. <laughs> so, <Three keys. laughs> that is the best charisma we have. <laughs> Someone, he's, not, he's not good at talking them into anything or out of anything. They just don't hate him as much as they hate yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> he's just so a regular what? guy. He's just a regular guy. <laughs> Yeah, he's not weird. <laughs> well, that's, that's... <laughs> Hopefully we get the one guy that, you know, the type of guy to write down the master plan somewhere. And we, <laughs> we don't have to do too much dealing with him. But yeah, it's just... you know, oh, we're, uh, we're good to go. We're going to Umbara. Um, somebody died. It's a funeral. <laughs> It's very personal. Stop asking questions. We're, we're there for vacation, <laughs> yeah. really right? Or you're you're there to see family? Is that our that's our story? Uh, yeah, like the the Dichi family, or at least um, how backstory comes into play is uh, they're they're pretty well known and pretty well off for the most part. Okay. Yeah, we're security. Yeah. I didn't even realize until now that Umbara was even within this uh, this control of the galaxy. So yeah. <laughs> I went from the Republic to Zerka, and my home world is in the Hapes. <laughs> and, uh, it's somewhat. It's fairly new that it's been in Hapen control. Probably about the last six okay. years. Uh, so uh, it's definitely, there was a Republic control. Uh, well, it was Republic control when he left. Dominion control while he probably in school, and then. Now hate control. Uh, Wonderful. But, uh, you guys uh, emerge from hyperspace. Uh, you see at the checkpoint, uh, Hapen Dragons. Uh, this is what kind of their, their capital ships are. They've got a very stylistic approach. Uh, like you could tell aesthetic is very important to the Hapens. Uh, but you guys give your spiel uh, with... Uh, Tell us going home, the Zerka credentials, uh, two Zerka scientists on board, and they buy it. They, 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 they kind of, you hear the, the other, other kind of the other guy, or the, shoot, the girl on the other line, I should say, uh, go, <clears throat> sorry, go, I understood, uh, credentials check out, uh, Zerka vessel Novacana, uh, you're free to pass along, uh, pass your regards on to the Dici family. Will do. Thank you. That, that just works. keep swimming. Just keep swimming. <laughs> really, the comms aren't off yet. Don't say that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, so I, I'm not sure on uh, space distance and whatnot, but yeah, as we as we get closer to the planet, I, um, the scanners for the ship i would just ask jarvis while we're scanning to just kind of passively keep an eye out to make sure nobody's watching us um just in case and then as we get closer to the to planet um whatever makes sense to uh switch our transponder codes so that we kind of transition into that uh reconnaissance and undercover uh mode so yeah, I maybe was thinking, uh, 
turn on stealth too. That's what I was thinking. Is if we the stealth drive has to be deactivated for hyperspace, right? And then reactivating it for real space. But um, if it's you could do it, but it's a hyperspace. You have to run the hyperspace malfunction table or what's it called? Oh, right. Hyperspace. Oh, uh, we're not, not don't do that. Mishap stable. Mishap stable. Um, so that I was thinking, if is there if there's a system that like that's on the way that you normally bypass, we could stop out in there, switch the transponders because I don't know how long it takes. Oh no, transponders it, it does take a couple hours, but you can do it in hyperspace. You don't need oh, to be in real okay. space to okay. do that. Yeah. Okay, so then we just go there and then flip it over in hyperspace and then we could look for Kashyyyk has moons? I don't know. I don't Look for it something to hide to, behind but, and uh... then hit the, uh, at least if they're catching us visually, we go behind something and activate the stealth field. They won't see us leave from behind that object. Shot in the dark, but... Mm -hmm. Let us slip well, slingshot around the moon. <laughs> Could be Take done. It from every side of the movie. We'll use the moon's gravity. Yeah. Yeah, we could. It's actually not a bad idea. We go in a lot faster. Probably, probably a rougher <laughs> ride. But... Just the Nova can handle it. Give the, give the, uh, give the information to Jarvis. He'll, he'll, uh, he'll assist with plotting that. I am still not used to you having an AI plot things. This is weird. You know, it pains me to say it, but you know, I gotta, I gotta admit that math, math is, is hard. <laughs> oh, I know, multi, multi variable calculus. But do you, do you ever think that maybe like, like Jarvis will learn too much? You know what I mean? No, I'm not too worried about him learning too much. I actually encourage him to uh, keep evolving. What if he, like, gets curious about In the wrong things? Invasion part two. <laughs> <laughs> the droid <laughs> army. Well, he will... He <laughs> will... <laughs> uh, J4, J4 uh, first of all, he can hear everything that you're saying, and I'm sure that oh, he, would, he would love to comment on this if, uh, if you asked him. But I'm not worried about it because he he's the ship. So it's to put it in a simple way, he's just the ship. He's a very he's a very smart entity of this ship. And if I can get the next uh, the next part of this, he will be able to fly it. Uh, he'll be able he can already control some of our weapons and, and systems. Um, but he's you haven't been with us uh, that long, but he's been very he's been very helpful. Uh, there's a lot of things that without him would have been a lot more difficult. So I think the more time that you're with us, the more time that you're on the Novacana, you'll you come to realize the 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 value that um that J four adds. Isn't that right, J four? <laughs> of course. Uh, you uh, oh, organics uh, are not always the the most perceptive or easily able to calculate. Uh, I aid you in that. Uh, I'm here to serve. Still creepy. You meat bags, or <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to add a meat bag, but it didn't... <laughs> oh, you know, I'll take your word for it. I mean, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't seem bad. I was just, you know, having a stray thought, I guess. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, uh, I didn't, I, I didn't take it. Uh, I, I hope you don't mind if I change my sleeping patterns and act erratically around him so he doesn't establish a pattern that. <laughs> I hope that's not a problem because I'm going to do that. I, gosh, um, wait, what did really, what did you mean by the wrong things? Well, what you know wrong... how like whoever these people are love to like what happens if we cut people's cheeks open and put coral implants in them to control them through the mind, that kind of thing, or what do all the species look like if I gather them all up and cut them all open at the same time? That kind of weird thing. Technology, hmm. you know, it, who knows how a machine thinks? Have no but... worries, Uli. I care nothing for your organics. <laughs> I, that's uh, somehow not comforting. <laughs> I... 
what he means by that it's a it's a very neutral uh sort of carrying he's not gonna he's not gonna fly the ship away mm -hmm. to preserve himself versus uh gotcha yeah. okay yeah it's like a bug i don't care if it's there or not if someone steps on it it's no loss but i'm not gonna go step on it of you know, course so that, that prime directive is to protect uh the zerka and talos's interests but the rest of you <laughs> you well, hear the voice too. I mean, what <laughs> the hell, man? With, I wear a red shirt being... doesn't mean I'm not important. Like I can hear like the the balancing of like figurative like hands, like eh. Arrested, <laughs> Talus. Right? Yes, you guys. No. <laughs> um, well, uh, with that being said, uh, J four that. There, you are coming due for some modifications uh, here soon. Some that I, I think that you will like, but if you could please update, um, update that line of thinking right there, and we'll we're gonna go ahead and add everybody that's on this ship to that list of uh, uh, interests of mine. Priority one, same as you, or priority two. Priority is one. We all fall under. We all fall under priority one uh, considerations. Updating now. I ought to do feel a little bit better. <laughs> and I'm sorry that honestly that um, we've been so focused on the Vong threats and moving from all these points and with everything that's been going on. That's a. I apologize. That is a slight oversight. Uh, by me he is he is my responsibility so i didn't realize we were on a tiered list <laughs> yeah you haven't worked with zerka very long have you no yeah there's some people they send in to like they would have probably sent in teams it, actually they did send in a team to go investigate what's that noise on vela and it turns out that noise was a huge explosion when the planet blows up and that's what they do to people who are on the bottom tiers. They get to go find out what these things are, while people in the top tier get to go, hmm, that was a big explosion. And they just keep getting more of us to keep going in and do all that stuff. So, Zerka has a very healthy recruitment pattern. We can always replace new organics. You wanted to say me very true, J4. <laughs> <laughs> There's Sorry, I don't know why. Oh, I'm getting irritable at this machine. It is just a machine, but our pe we 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 don't like these things for a reason. I'll 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 be nice, Travis. I promise. Well, he's uh he's beyond technology, or at least that's the goal here. And um he he's very direct. He's in the way that I have created him. He's leaps and bounds beyond where he used to be. Um. But there, there's some minor adjustments that that can be used. But he's he's constantly learning. So, you know, who knows what what he'll say and what he'll do in the future. But I have every confidence that J4 will take care of us and um, has my best interests at heart, which are now, of course, myself and you guys and uh, this mission. And I so. will try to stay in your best interests. Then I guess. <laughs> Yeah, don't make me angry. <laughs> you don't want to move to priority two. <laughs> oh, no. Duck right. got four. Duck's got some fire in him. Jeez. <laughs> so you guys, uh, so are you, uh, so it sounds like you guys are going to try to hide. Uh, apparently, Kashyyyk has three moons. Are you hiding behind the moons? Are you guys coming right out and trying to use a transponder? Or what are you all thinking so far? See, that's what I was thinking. Like, they can probably... I mean, they've got probably regular scanners, so they could see a ship entering, most likely. And if it heads, we head towards the moon, and then we activate that drive, it should shield us from the sensors, so it, to all outward appearances, would look like we went to that moon. But then we just don't. Yeah, but... Is that... I imagine they have some sort of a schedule or something to keep, right? Like some sort of a, oh, we've been expecting you, you're two weeks late. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if uh, if we had a ship that was a few weeks late and it just showed up out of nowhere and then 
landed on a moon and didn't really communicate with us. Fair point. That would that that would you know fire up all sorts of alarm bells. We pop in there and say we had engine trouble and we land. I like that idea. Let's say let's send out a distress signal, head towards the moon, turn the oh, thing no. on, presumably shuts off the scanners and all that, and then we go away. They'll have to come send somebody out by the time they even can figure out what the hell happened. Hopefully we'll have done what we need to do and get out of there. But I don't know these people as well as you might. Once they see us, the gig is up. So I assume, you know, once we get close enough that they make visual. Then the really transponder matter. only matters or works at a distance is what I'm gathering from this conversation. So the transponder actually doesn't even come into play unless somebody somebody sees past our our stealth. So everybody make an intelligence first. save too. Intelligence. Everyone save. save. Everybody do that. Yeah. How do I tell them that? Hmm. Are you guys smart enough? <clears throat> I ain't. I don't know why I did that at advantage, but. Well, Dash, today you're the smart guy. Uh, you uh, you know that, and I don't know if Dash has messed around with transponders before uh, in a past life, because uh, on visual inspection, it's not going to hold up, but it's not going to hold up to people that know what the ship looks like. Uh, if somebody takes a look at the scanners, they're going to see the transponder for the uh, Crusader ship, uh, which I realize I've never named. Uh, it is now uh, the older uh, the Crusader ship. Uh, so uh, it, basically, if they've seen the ship before, if it's something that they've come across, uh, they'd notice it, but they may not if they just take a look at the sensors. Uh, if they look at the Nova kind of hard, though, with it being sleek, shiny, and nice, they'll probably realize it's not a Crusader ship, but it depends on how diligent and how much the scanner tech is paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this, so I, I would pass that information along, but I would probably preface it like, have you guys never tried to sneak onto a planet and a ship using a different transponder before? This is how <laughs> it works. <laughs> oh, and the stealth drive, it's, what does it do exactly, Doctor? Makes us invisible? Uh, it's in the eye? description on Will 20. No, <laughs> um, it gives us, uh, it'll give us advantage uh on our uh, attempts to hide or yeah. attempt to hide but it, it does like i said earlier it gives us that reduction in the, our mm -hmm. uh perception uh or wisdom yeah uh, scan yeah. um it, it doesn't make us invisible though right like so it's just the no. same like oh, okay okay yeah so. that that was, the, that was a huge part of my the plan. basic one that we have <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I think there's I think there's a step above what we have that actually makes two it steps, um, yeah, two steps. Like that. yeah. yeah so. well, okay. that might come into play when we're trying to leave, but as long as we fly normally and land, yeah. we can get some info, maybe blow something up. He nudges Dash a little. Yeah. <laughs> and uh you know, then make our way out. If we have to get out of there in a hurry, maybe we do it, you know, run away in a sort of sneaky way. So Vars, you're you're saying that we land using the transponder and yeah. not go in smoothly first. Okay. Yeah. Land like we own the like, you know, we're supposed to be there. Why are you late? We had engine trouble. What? You know, and if I mean, they if they know the ship, if they know the ship, the ogre, yeah. and they're expecting us at X time in the future or from the past, yeah, and we're showing up now. I mean and then they okay. visually or they have us land in a a um let's say uh, a pad area or an open area or wherever and they see the ship they're going to realize that's not us well then we start shooting all right <laughs> i mean the way as long i see as it, fighters we're okay yeah the way i see it that ship that we saw was a, a hunk of crap so oh another crusader ship had engine trouble what a surprising yeah. surprise ah. well, yeah. we were we were late because we were completely overhaul in this ship yeah, yeah. <laughs> well uh, well no the ship is bad oh boy i'm guessing once we get kind of close to the planet there will probably be a lot of traffic and if we were to pop that which means their sensors probably lose us 
I'm thinking we can just kind of blend in and fly in the planet, right? Like, so once we're close, that's kind of my thinking is right. There's probably a lot of control traffic leaving the planet and coming onto the planet, but on the planet. No, so well, do we really need to finish landing or do we just <laughs> buck out? Oh, maybe. I mean, again, we want to get down to the bottom of this. Hopefully they tell us to land at the coordinates we're heading to, you know, yeah. and that way we don't arouse suspicion until we start shooting. Mm, I see what you're saying. Yeah. We do want to avoid entanglements if we can. Do we know how far remote, how far removed this is from, was that R R R R R city or whatever that was? Uh, the coordinates we're supposed to go oh, to. Oh, the coordinates? Like how far oh, yeah. away is that from that city? So you realize, uh, I'm not sure distance-wise, but like uh, kind of rural city is like in like, it's a tree city like the Wookiees usually build. Uh, the coordinates you got were pretty far. Uh, it's like, I'm a lot directly below it, but pretty close to directly below okay. it, but further down in the Shadowlands. There are different height. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Oh, and also, and I'll add this too, uh, you guys would realize that it's, Especially probably Caesar. I know if he's been there to Kashyyyk before. You can't really fly in the Shadowlands. It's too too dense. Yeah, too dense to, to be able to kind of mm -hmm. navigate between the branches and all the different trees and foliage. You crash. All right. Well. well, do we bank on the chance that the Wookies are nice and let us park in the nice city, and <laughs> or <laughs> do we fly fly this thing down to the ground and just park it there? I mean probably safer down there but only from the wookies well wait the the coordinates show that the ship landed down there no or did i read this wrong no. uh so the coordinates show it kind of going to rolux city but the person's notepad where he, he wrote too much shows mm -hmm. the coordinates of the lab within the shadow <laughs> oh, okay so it's like uh, we park, they park and then you know descend on some like weird wookie elevator powered by who knows what make your way down well, and then there they are the interesting part of this is whether we use uh the crusader transponder codes for the zirka transponder codes um <laughs> yeah you don't want to turn on we use we use the we use the crusader transponder code and they see our ship and then they're like okay you're not that and then if we use the Zerka transponder codes, they're going to just shoot us before we even try to land, probably. Just given the history between Kashyyyk and uh, <clears throat> Zerka. Um, if that applies here. But, Gosh, oh, I yeah. Dallas would know that Zerka is well hated on Kashyyyk. Uh, even before all of this started, uh, there's, there's a long and unpleasant history between the two. You could have stopped that sentence of well hated. <laughs> are we so i'd rather at least have a fighting chance on the on the yeah. uh the, the platforms um yeah. after we land to explain it rather than uh already just getting shot at immediately upon entering the atmosphere so, so it sounds like you guys want to use the uh, crusader transponders come out in the open uh and then try to talk your way through nope. yeah perfect nope. Uh, you guys uh, emerge from hyperspace. Uh, you see kind of a lush green planet of Kashyyyk uh, hanging in the distance, and you see the most ragtag, beat-up-looking fleet you've ever come across. Uh, it looks like they've kind of anything that was space-worthy, they've put it in space and slapped uh, some guns on it. Uh, definitely more than even the Nova, the Nova Khan could take, but you know with the, the Hapens or the Mandalorians or any of the major factions decided, hey, we're done with this spoodoo, we're going to slap this down, it, it's getting slapped out. Uh, but more than enough to hold it from kind of minor factions. Uh, you see it kind of hung in the distance. Uh, you guys emerge from hyperspace. Uh, you are hailed by the the, the fleet. Uh, you hear kind of a Wookiee howling on the other end, and you do hear a joy translating. You hear that, and then the, translate to the joy, and that's the last roar I'm doing. So uh, you hear the, the, the joy <laughs> on this end go. Crusader ship, the owner? Uh, you are late on returning back, and shipment was never received on the other end. Uh, please report. Hand over the comm. What do we say? Uh, we had engine problems, 
and the cargo hold got vented, so the cargo died in transit. We had to repair the issue, then we made our way back here to get uh, more cargo. We found a better ship, basically? And, yeah, we had All to right. get... Uh, well, I might have just... <laughs> <laughs> all right so vars Dallas, be... Dallas looks at uli shot <laughs> no i had my hand over the mic it's fine <laughs> everything everything's fine here everything's yeah. okay yeah how are you <laughs> god that's what an, that's what an eight charisma looks like it's not good <laughs> So what do you want me to throw oh, down? Because it's going to be good. <laughs> I'll let you do your choice. Uh, you could use a persuasion or deception. Your choice. Ah, powerful. Ah. Zero on both. Equally bad. Take a, take a D6 as well. Um, Hell yeah. All right. For a temp please, sir. Hell nice. Hey, there we go. Uh, you hear the, the Wookiee <laughs> roar out again and the droid goes. That is distressing to hear. Uh, glad that you made it back uh, and that you, the crew, survived. Uh, please proceed to Landing Bay 865. Uh, there will be the crew master there to greet you and help fix up the ship. Uh, thanks. Uh, on our way. And, like, shutting off the comm, he's going to look at the rest of the crew like, how the hell did that work? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, eats me. <laughs> I imagine with Dallas' help, you probably see like a little bit of like smoke or like bad signals coming from the engine as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, the, with that tech, uh, the guy that was it, the uh, the tech boost. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tech uh, boost. Uh, to give yeah, a little just, truth to the lie. I like I hit the hit the keys and <laughs> just all of a sudden, like one of the one of the engines. Or no, why would I do that? J four. Uh, stutter, stutter the left engine and turn off. Uh, I, I don't know, like, so that they they get some readings off the ship that and some water into space, space, so it looks like a vapor cloud or for reason. <laughs> <laughs> but it works, so yeah. that's all that matters. I'll take it. Now the hard part: convincing them that we are Wookies who captured other Wookies. There, there were other humans on board, or humanoids yeah. on board, too. So was, was, was there a Hoden? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm pretty sure they're going to notice that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are able to bring the ship in past uh, the ragtag fleet of the Crusaders descending into the atmosphere of Kashyyyk. Uh, and as you get to Kashyyyk, you see it's kind of made up of uh, just these um, skyscraper like uh, worship trees, uh, just dotting the landscape larger than some of the kind of taller buildings on uh, Coruscant. Uh, this truly just something that just dominates the landscape. Uh, with uh, Uli, you Uli's probably never been to Kashyyyk, has he? Uh, he, I don't think he did. He would have definitely known about them and like the tall trees and everything because of the. The biology background, but beyond that, I don't think he's actually ever been. Uli, you just sense life unbound uh, as you get to Kashyyyk. Uh, you feel uh, it's not kind of like the, the the city life where you feel just kind of a number of beings cramped upon each other. Uh, you just feel this kind of almost interconnected weave in the force uh, of the planet as you get as you kind of descend through the atmosphere uh, into Kashyyyk. Uh, but eventually you do approach uh, Rurluk Ru City. God, the, the wiki names are hard to say. <laughs> it's one of those, like, it's just... Put marbles in your mouth and try to talk. And then... <laughs> Too many consonants the... and vowels. Like, it's, yeah. it's just... <laughs> Designated landing bay. Too exactly. many of the same consonant and vowels. Yeah. Over and over. <laughs> Uh, but you make your way there, and you do land. Uh, and you do see on uh, kind of the landing pad, uh, there's like a scattering of uh, different Crusader forces. You see them wearing uh, the, the the Falcon of the Crusaders. Uh, you do see kind of next to where the Nova Kana lands uh, is a Wookiee. Uh, he's got like a no armor, uh, just wearing his hide. Uh, he's got a wicked looking uh, glaive on his back. 
Uh, and next to him, uh, a human uh, with uh, kind of a blaster slung low on his hip and a blaster rifle across his back. Uh, they're kind of waiting uh, as the ship descends. What's Brew doing? Um, Thars has... I, I'm not trying to offend, but I, I think... Why they, the face? I think... I, I'm just saying... I'm just saying, I think that you're the more <clears throat> crusader looking among us. Um, and this this might be the only way that we can make it past these two. Or, uh, I mean, we could gauge their reaction on landing and see how they feel about the, the ship and how it looks. They might not even give a shit. But, I mean, if they care, I think we'd have a better advantage bringing them onto the ship. And taking care of them here versus um en- engaging with them out in the in the in the open bay all right hold on let me uh let me steal my helmet because this thing's kind of a giveaway <laughs> and he'll uh remove the helmet to uh, <sighs> give once again uh, a, a very pale with man with scruff and in his uh mid to early 40s and <sighs> Put it in his backpack. And, okay. Uh, cover story. You, this was part of the ship. There was there was much more crew. Um, you came to help. A lot of you were uh, Crusader sympathizers. And we were able to figure out... Um, we, we, we This was a mutiny. Does that... Yeah? We killed, we killed the people that killed that, the other people? No, we, we killed the people that weren't for the Crusader way. Gotcha. Oh, so you're saying kind of like a ship that came to help you after the engine troubles? You guys just uh, mutineered and took it? Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Do the Crusaders have like a common, fr- like, may the what force that? be with you? Like, do they have a thing that they say to each other? Oh, the Crusaders. Yeah, something like that. Like. Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, liberation to all. Okay. Liberation you know to that? all. Yeah, would we know that? Yeah, you guys. Yeah, um, actually, because uh, uh, I'll say that you heard that in the uh, data pad video that you watched. He said it like an obnoxious yeah. amount of times. No. Oh. <laughs> um, all right. So again, this that was just off the top of my head. Um, is that sound like hell? Yeah, the Crusaders would totally do that. Or if I told them that, the Crusade they would be like, "You're not a Crusader. You're a monster." You've got another way to explain how a Hoden ended up on a human and Wookiee ship. <laughs> yeah, I am exactly. all ears. That's the only. That's and the only way. Much nicer ship. A much nicer. Yeah, very yeah. much nicer <laughs> ship. A much, much nicer. I mean, ship. based on the based on the um, the visual on coming coming into the atmosphere and seeing their ragtag uh, fleet, I think that they're willing to take help from anybody at this point that sympathizes with them. That's yeah. just my take. Yeah. But we, so we need, we it's need a. More. We need to explain why we we're passing ourselves off as their old ship. Yeah. All right. We needed a transponder. That okay. last ship was just completely wrecked. This one had an unfriendly one that wouldn't have allowed us to even come back. They would have shot us yeah. down before we even made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. I think I think we'll be all right. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 This is so I then it just started blasting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, five minutes later. Get down! I'm gonna open the door and throw my chakram in the <laughs> <laughs> Drive my oh. chakram. Oh, man. Yeah, I can go out there with you because Dash definitely looks like he could be a crusader. Shit, yeah. All right. Yeah, he did. Right. Look, guess, he's. The crusader just has a really bad headache. Mm-hmm. All right, so you guys. For some of us, oh. some of us staying on the ship, or are we all going out? Maybe you guys stay on the ship. <laughs> so we don't look like crazy. Throw the humans out. <laughs> yeah. We're, 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 right. sh- we're flicking switches and doing our our post flight check. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys come out. You smell just kind of the wild air of Kashyyyk. Uh, you see this Wookiee warrior, uh, deep black fur, standing on uh, the, the balcony next to uh, another kind of human. Little, Kind of, he's got like uh, probably the cleanest cut of the Crusaders you've seen. Uh, he's got what looks to be a militaristic style gear on there, uh, or armor, not armor, but clothing. Uh, he, uh, you see the Wookiee kind of roars at you, and uh, he also speaks and goes, uh, 
crew of the order, this is not the ship that you left in. Uh, cargo did not reach the destination. We've heard Orbit say that you had engine malfunctions, but uh, that does not match with uh, the, the profile of the ship. Uh, please explain immediately before we need to detain you. Well, the original ship that we were on had uh, some sort of a problem, an explosion, and it rendered us... Uh, well, it killed most of the rest of the crew and left it adrift in space. The previous owners of this ship uh, came to help. We were fortunate that some of the some of them aboard had heard of the cause and joined me in mutiny. Uh, and trying to help us move and get forward with liberation for all. This will be a fine addition to our to our fleet. Perfect. Roll your choice of charisma check with advantage. Oh boy! <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's nice. be defiant about it. Oh yeah, solid. Uh, you see the Wookie gonna howl out, uh, and for, probably for a minute, like probably tense up because a Wookie howling right in your face probably isn't like the most pleasant experience. Uh, but you do see you've got a warm his face into a smile uh, and you see the uh, the other kind of human uh, walk up and kind of pat you on the back and go, liberation for all. This will be a fine addition to the fleet. Good work. Liberation for all. Liberation for all. Yeah. <laughs> you see this again? Yeah, liberation for all. <laughs> Just really drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, <laughs> or is beside himself with <laughs> how the hell is this working? <laughs> what? All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, what's uh, how's our next shipment looking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll uh, we'll check with our sources. Uh, you all get some R and R. Uh, go to the city. We'll uh, we'll check with our contacts and see what's going on and what we'll want need you to bring back to Serpendel. All right. Um, some of the members are new to the cause. Should we inform anybody of? They're a little unusual. They're not your typical. Uh, they're not a very common species to find amongst the Crusaders amongst us. <clears throat> All are welcome to the cause. Uh, if you vouch for them. They're fine with us. Uh, just make sure they're not doing anything untowards and uh, make sure that none of them are forced spies or anything like that. Uh, but as long as they're just around our people, they're, they're welcome. They're, they're, they're helping us liber find liberation for all. Liberation for all. And with that, he will turn around. <laughs> just like, what the criff, what the criff, what the criff? How are we not dead? Oh, man. All right. Um, he'll go ahead and collect the rest of the crew and say, hey, no shooting yet. Man. Uh, yeah, I noticed and um, everything seems to be well. Uh, what's the what's the plan? What's the plan now? I didn't think we'd get this far. <laughs> All right. Sounds like our usual plan. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't think we'd have to plan this far in advance. Yeah, I, I just I just thought we'd be reacting to gunfire. At this point. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Do you think it'll be okay um, to just tell them that I'm associated with Zerka in the event that they ask? I'd rather, if I'm gonna lie about something, I'd rather tell them a half truth. So, changing my name, perhaps. I know somebody that I really don't like back home that I could use the name of. Well, well yeah, I, mean, I have an idea on that. Why don't we just tell them we're working for them undercover? They got We can give them information that, that's clearly Zerka held, proprietary information. I mean, hell, my name's on a bunch of patents, so is yours. We can yeah, tell them yeah. things that they can double check and know immediately that we're not lying. If anyone talks to you, just say liberation for all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really like that. Well, I mean, how? Think of it this way: How the hell did they even get this far? They had to have somebody helping them at some stage. That, yeah. I mean, okay, rebellions so. are born of turncoats and you know yeah. traitors and stuff mm -hmm. that band together and fight. Fair well, the way I phrase it is that you know, y'all, you, you two were part of the original crew, and yeah. you believed in the cause and said, "Hell with this," and helped us take yeah. this ship for the cause. 
So, um, I mean, you can be who you are. This is a known Zerka ship, right? Yeah, right. I mean, if they run it, I don't know. I think we're overthinking this. Mm-hmm. Probably. <laughs> Dan, we didn't think go. we'd get this far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. Well, before we leave the ship, um, Talos would J4. Anybody comes on this ship, do not acknowledge their presence. Do not talk to them. Do not let them know that you are here. Hide yourself as best you can until I am back on this ship. Understood. I will keep my presence hidden. Yeah, good call. Uh, Ready to go when you guys are. Time to rub elbows with uh, the Liberators. Yeah, time to go see what I've been feeling this whole time. Mm-hmm. Get a good look at those trees. Yeah. Yeah. What did they say about traps for force users? What was that? Or hating for? I just Never. assume Never. people Never. aren't going to be friendly. Just. <laughs> <laughs> My experience, I've lived 60, I'm 60 years old, and I've lived through some weird parts of the galaxy, and I'll tell you, no one ever treats people who are different in a good way, in any good way. Well, uh, for what it's worth, Uli, I think they'll be tolerant enough. He says, well, like, sizing them up and down. So, uh, whatever, let's, uh, let's not keep them waiting, I guess. It's true. Fair Fair enough. You guys make your way into the city, uh, which is kind of like it's a, an amazing design. Uh, and this is true for kind of how Kashyyyk does it. They build their cities into trees. So it's kind of a mixture of kind of like wooden architecture. Uh, really, if anybody's afraid of heights, like it's very high up, kind of like the Coruscant Towers. Uh, but rather than being surrounded by skyscrapers and land speeders and all of that, uh, it's just kind of open air, kind of natural life, uh, trees, branches, uh, and they've really woven the kind of the, the na- natural architecture into their style. Uh, and you guys see it's filled with Wookiees, uh, humans, and uh, others, and mostly the people, kind of, a lot of people are just kind of Wookiees going about their daily life and uh, all of that. Uh, and you also see a number of Crusaders uh, wearing their armor and gear and insignia, uh, kind of walking around. Uh, you don't see uh, much technology uh, outside of kind of what's needed to keep the city uh, alive and float. Uh, one of the few things you do see uh, is in the center of the town. Uh, is a little hollow projector, uh, and you see uh, it alternating between speeches with the Liberator uh, going over liberation for all, uh, down with the Force users, the galactic governments are for the weak, uh, people need to fight out of their own strength and learn to toughen up and fight past the pain. Uh, a lot of just kind of uh, ins- those type of inspirational speeches. Uh and as you guys uh, look around, uh, you do have a little bit of time, and we'll see what else you guys want to do in kind of your exploration time. But you do find two different ways as you kind of maneuver through the city to make your way towards the portent you found on uh, the conspicuously written notepad. Uh, you find that you could either, there's a lift. The lift is pretty heavily guarded with Crusader forces. Uh, so you got uh, some Wookiees there, some Crusader humans. Uh, it's it's you see about at least seven different people, uh, almost at all times, kind of keeping watch on that lift that would descend down to the Shadowlands. Uh, you also know that if you wanted to, to go super discreet and not have to talk your way past it or fight your way past it, uh, you all with uh, could just try to climb your way down. Uh, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna be tiring, uh, but it's a way that you could get down there without anybody knowing you're there. I am a tree climbing species, so it's a little bit easier for me. I've I only... got a grappling hook. <laughs> I don't know if we should push our luck by talking with people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many? How many people are guarding the lift? Uh, seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not a lot at all. Um, <laughs> oh boy. I think. Um, I don't know. 
Is this the decision that we have to make now? Uh, so if you guys want to do some more exploring around, you are able to do, uh, but that is definitely would be kind of your next big decision. Uh, so it would be uh, either talking or fighting your way through uh, taking the lift uh, or uh, climbing down uh, and risking some exhaustion uh, with yeah. uh, the, the, the checks there. Uh, and I'll kind of give you guys a, a sneak peek. Uh, so this module, depending on how you guys go or the one I wrote for this, uh, there's not as much combat as I usually include. So you guys have kind of avoided a couple of the big combats, combats already uh, with some good rolls and a uh, surprise, surprisingly good story for why the ship looked different on that side. Good on that one, Bars. <laughs> that was going to be a hard check until you had a, a surprisingly good reason why you guys would have a different ship there. Uh, so they have this one, uh, there's a couple of mandatory fights, but a little bit less than I usually include in there. So depending on how you guys go, you can avoid uh, it's a dice luck a little bit further in the adventure, too. You, you may avoid a few fights. I mean, we could try asking around and seeing what does it take to get into the Shadowlands? If you want to. Yeah, you know. I mean, with uh, two, two scientists with credentials that they can show um, in their fields uh, wanting to go down to, say, conduct experiments, which seems to be a thing here, anyways, um, and, uh, and kind of venture out and and whatnot we don't have to obviously say anything specific about the lab unless this lift is like a direct like lift down and uh, you know a hundred foot walk to the north and there's the lab um but maybe we could come up with a semi-legitimate reason as to why we go down there and maybe find a supervisor of sorts that could get us that permission that we would just talk to we could always try the I didn't know I was supposed to, wasn't supposed to be here. <laughs> Act, just walk on like we're supposed to be there, and then when they push us away and tell us no and what we need to get on, we have a little more information. I mean, what's the worst they do? Tell us no. Part of the crew, right? They're not just going to throw us over the edge. I've got a random idea. Okay, so you guys are new crusaders who are not combat experienced. And the only way to toughen you up is to take you to the Shadowlands. Yeah. yeah Bites of the spiders. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's exactly no. why you need toughening up. Like, <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already in my role. Like, it's perfect. Let's do it. All right. All right. Uh, we could try it. So, uh, uh, yeah. There'll definitely be a temp boost on our face paint over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, all right, the, the this is the Mandalorian face of the party once again. <laughs> I hate you the least. Yep. <laughs> All right. You know, I, I could I could have uh, just this is a kind of retrospect thing. I'm sorry. I could remove kind of like the the scientific robes and whatnot that I'm wearing because that's just the clothing exterior that I have over my weave armor. So. <laughs> I'm an umbar and I look human. I'm pretty pale and got some glowing eyes, uh, depending on the light. But I mean, all right. Well, I have uh, some. I have some armor on. Well, we could try. Let's. Uh, you want to try approaching the guard? See if we can make our way down, with the premise that we need to toughen you up. I like that. I mean, it's not yeah. the worst idea ever. I'm just saying. Okay, I, mean, I don't know how they sold the last one, but all right. <laughs> and, we, and, then the, and then the tall guy here, Uli, we can just say he's the doctor just in case anything happens. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hey, I'll so, get called uh, Dr. Hoffman. Well, let's all we'll try approaching the guards. All seven of them. All seven. <laughs> <laughs> Looking as non threatening as possible. <laughs> confidently approaching the guards as if we are supposed to be there yeah we were so, told to go here and do this yeah, news to us we're not supposed to be here so walking and like looking like you know like i'm in a good mood like hey how's it going yeah. and uh how do they how do the guards react as they see me directly approaching them 
So you do see kind of two, and basically as you guys approach, uh, it's uh, near kind of this big center tree within the, the city. Uh, it's a little hollowed out lift uh, kind of within, built within the tree. Uh, so kind of think like an elevator inside like a giant tree, the big enough to, uh, it's like really large around them. Think of a measurement there. It's more than 60 feet uh, kind of within the interior, kind of with the circumference on that side. Uh, so it's a pretty large lift. Uh, and you see as you guys kind of approach the entrance into the tree, uh, two uh, of the guards kind of approach. Uh, you hear one's a Wookiee, one's a human. Uh, the Wookiee kind of roars at you and kind of holds out his hand. Uh, the human goes, why are you guys approaching the Shadow Lamps? Oh, well... One of our, uh, one of us, one of our mighty crusaders is uh, trying to prove himself a little further. He's uh, he's done well, but we need to make sure he's up to the challenges ahead, getting liberation for all. He's going to liberation for all. <laughs> um, sorry, we uh, haven't come to Kashyyyk too often. Is uh, is that is it, are the Shadowlands off limits? John Lanza for business. Uh, you, you, actually, before he does that, he does repeat liberation for all before he even gets into uh, his spiel. Uh, he goes, Shadow Lanza, we got business down there. Uh, we usually don't, we occasionally do hunting parties and send people down there. Not usually for toughening up the new blood. This arena's for it. And he points back to the city. Uh, and he kind of looks past you guys. Uh, where's your Wookiee guy? We, always, we don't send people down there without a Wookiee. Oh. Well, we were told that he were gonna he was gonna meet us down there. Not sure what time though, but did say he was gonna meet us down there. Can't recall his name. All right, make a persuasion check. Boost, tough boost. All right. All right. What's D six, right? Yes. I'm on a big inspiration because yeah, guys, is that cool? Too? Yeah, okay. let's go for it. All right, uh, let's persuasion. Let's see where that gets us. <laughs> oh, God. that's right. <laughs> All right. Oh man, wait. Uh, <laughs> How many inspiration 15. do we have? Uh, unfortunately, you can only use it once per check. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, I'll use my uh, defiant. So 15 total. 15. Uh, you see him kind of ponder it for a moment. He goes, you all look tough. Liberation for all. Uh, but we don't send any people down here without the Wookiee. Go find your Wookiee. Uh, come back later. Uh, and send uh, send long arms over there to the arena. Have them take a couple of hits. Not toughen them up. You, you don't need to worry about the Shadow Lands. Well, I'm the doctor. He's, yeah, he's... <laughs> all right, fine. I'll go fight. <laughs> Inside Uli's like, yes. <laughs> Just, all right. Yeah. Fine. They don't even know. They don't know. Gardeners so about to plant a whole new garden on Kashyyyk. <laughs> Bean garden. Oh yeah. Oh man. Look at you uh, for well. three minutes. <laughs> well, uh, maybe we can get a Wookiee guy down at the uh at the arena, you think? Prove yourself. Worth a shot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna get hurt, aren't I? <laughs> this is really gonna hurt. All right, Uli. All right, Uli. Don't mess up. We've heard. Do, we've heard good things. Does do we know about uh, Uli's festivities? I think it, you guys have heard. Yeah, you've heard rumors about it. Uh, so I, rumor. I forgot to update the rumors doc, but I think I posted a little while back. But yeah, you guys heard some rumors about. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the gardener, uh, yeah. which uh, matches Uli's, uh, which you know is Uli, uh, mm -hmm. fighting in some underground rings on Bespin. Oh, here I was all this time thinking you were the gardener. Oh, this is is this not your thing? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll find out when we get in there, I guess. <laughs> 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 he's not being very deceptive, like, he's just not good at that, but he's just. <laughs> I'm trying to pretend like it's nothing, but it clearly is. Like he's very like you know, when kids like try to hide oh, their anxious. God, if, if you had a tail, it'd be wagging. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. My tail's wagging. Let's get ready to run. My head oh. tails are they're doing 
the happy dance. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm excited to find out what you're going to fight. Yeah, yeah they were non-specific as to what I you fight. Yeah, I with the Wookie. They're it's dangerous like, enough. We'll Maybe find that sure. out next time. <laughs> uh, sweet. So we'll pick up next session uh, with uh, the crew going to the arena and seeing if they can or impress somebody and see if they can find a Wookiee guy that'll help them get past the uh, the uh, the lift down to the Shadowlands and figure out what's going on in those labs. Uh, so join us. Uh, would that be would that be August? Uh, yeah, August second. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. Join, uh, join us August second uh, and find out what the crew gets up to there. But don't miss next Tuesday and uh, come hang out with Stranded. Uh, and Keith, anything with Stranded you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I think next session should be a lot of fun. I think, uh, the group might, might start to discover a little bit more. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Should be a lot of fun though. Hell yeah. Ooh. So come check us out. Uh, come back next Tuesday. Uh, and, uh, can I hang out with us on Star Wars Tuesday, but thanks everybody for joining. And, oh, let me do that. Uh, actually we're going to raid, uh, my friend Zach. Uh, so we're going to do a raid and see if I can do this right again. You playing Stardew Valley? I think so. Liberation yes, yeah. for all. Ah, liberation yes. for all. <laughs> yes, liberation for all. I love coming up with random phrases for people like that. We're like groups. Uh, yeah, when when we all jump over, that's what everyone has to do. Oh Just yeah, type in the, the chat. chat. <laughs> liberation for all. All right, see you, everybody. Uh, it's raining, I think. Uh, so see you next Tuesday. Uh, let's see if it's working. It's still going. There we go. Oh, I always have to remember.